WCRF Cleveland, WVMS Sandusky, WVML Millersburg, WVME Meadville, WVMN Newcastle, WVMU Ashtabula, or stream us anywhere with the Moody Radio app, other streaming services, and at moodyradio.org slash Cleveland. North Korea is lobbing more missiles into the sea. It's 6 o'clock. I'm Ron Eastwood, Moody Radio News. South Korea's military reports the missile was fired Monday morning local time. That missile launch also coincided with Secretary of State Antony Blinken's visit to South Korea. A new pickleball facility is being developed in Cleveland's Jefferson Puritus neighborhood. At least 10 indoor pickleball courts are planned for the Crossburn Avenue location, in addition to multiple outdoor courts. Plans are for the facility to open this June. And a British company called Blue Abyss has plans to start and build a $250 million facility on land it bought in Brook Park. Plans include a 164-foot deep pool, a centrifuge to mimic rocket takeoff, and a plane capable of creating weightlessness. It's designed to train people and test vehicles for two frontiers, space and the deep sea. I'll be right back with sports and weather. Attention all high school students and parents. We invite you to visit Moody's campus in the heart of downtown Chicago, in person or virtually. Experience life as a Moody student by scheduling an individual visit to campus with your family. We are excited to welcome you to learn more about whether Moody is right for you and your student. Meet with an admissions counselor and sit in on class in person or through Zoom. Schedule your campus visit today at moody.edu slash experience moody. In sports, the Blue Jackets got beat by the Jets 6-1. The Penguins crushed the Red Wings 6-3. And the Columbus Crew shut out the Red Bulls 3-0. Here's your Moody Radio Cleveland forecast. Partly cloudy with scattered snow showers this morning. Then mostly cloudy with scattered numerous snow showers this afternoon. Snow accumulating could, uh, snow accumulation could be around a half an inch, not all that much. Highs in the mid-30s. And at last check, we had flurries and 31 degrees in Cleveland, flurries and 26 degrees in Akron and Canton, Ashtabula reporting light snow and 30 degrees. It's time for your moron moment. A study has found that VR could reduce PTSD in veterans. The approach tweaks the brain's reaction to trauma, offering more than an effective treatment, much more than traditional therapies. In just six 25-minute sessions, vets have reported big-time relief. That's really amazing stuff. These men and women have risked their lives at the direction of our country. It's time we find a way to help them get their lives back. And that's your Moron Moment. Moron. And you'll find that on our Facebook and Instagram. It's 6.03 with Moody Radio News. I'm Ron Eastwood.
Mornings with Brian. Moody Radio Cleveland. 103.3 at 6 to 9 a.m. What a way to start a week. Both Shanes. That was Shane and Shane mm -hmm. here on Moody Radio. Lauren's worked with them quite a bit in her role uh, in Chicago before he came here. Uh -huh. Just twice. But they're nice guys. Yes, they're very nice. Yeah, they're I, the best. I actually took my daughters to one of the last performances they had in Chicago at Moody Bible Institute. And it, was, it wasn't a concert. It was a worship event. Yes. Which is, I think, their heart for mm -hmm. the Lord, which is pretty, my daughters were just blown away. Because the Moody students were all like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. It was worship night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was so good. Yeah. And they were on the Car Seat Questions podcast with us. Oh. Yeah, it was fun. You guys are big time. <laughs> they haven't even been on this show. It just happened to be right after Founders Week, so I was like, well, I should probably ask while they remember who I am. <laughs> well, and again, go check out Car Seat Questions. You have a brand new season coming very soon. Yeah, next week. Next week? Wow. Wow. We'll be talking all about that as it comes closer. But yeah. Car Seat Questions podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. And I think we have links at our site. Yep, we do. MoodyRadio.org slash Cleveland. The only thing I find in car seats is old Cheerios so and true. Skittles. <laughs> yeah. So true. Well, it's a phase of life where you know if you get like, you know, fall off a cliff and get stuck in the woods when no one knows you're there, you'll, you'll be able to eat for a long time. <laughs> like my, for a season in our minivan as a family, I knew we'd be okay for a couple of days. Ration those crumbs. Mm -hmm. There's whole chicken nuggets in there somewhere, oh, yeah. you know. <laughs> now, thanks to everybody last week who supported us during our Spring Share campaign. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was 2,431 people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys are the best. Seriously. Um, thanks to Trisha and Hudson and Marsha. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha and Spencer. Mm. 
Barbara and Ashland, Tracy and Olmstead Township. Uh, you got Christine in Cleveland, Martha in Cleveland, Lydia in Sullivan, William in Canfield, Pamela in Hudson, Jan in Wellington, Phil in Youngstown. I could just keep going for, you know, I could read 2,000 names, but I'm not going to do that. Cause and the cool weird. thing is, if as you mention all those cities, you know, they're kind of popping up in my head. Oh, that's east, that's west, that's north, that's south, that's, you know, and they're all over the place. All over the place. You guys are the best. Yeah, and in fact, um, we're so close to 100%. On a Monday morning, we're only eleven thousand dollars, almost twelve thousand dollars away from one hundred percent. So we're at like ninety-seven point six percent for those paying attention. With your ongoing support this week, those of you who missed it last week or didn't get a chance to give or can give a little more, we'll be at one hundred percent with just another twelve thousand bucks. Hmm. If you're curious, yes, you could still give now. Eight hundred six hundred nine six two four, eight hundred six hundred nine six two four, or go to moodyradio.org. MoodyRadio.org, uh, and you know, before I forget too, if we're going to shift gears quickly because we're so thankful for you, we got a monster giveaway running starting today, out of nowhere, right out of the gate, <laughs> boom! And it's not one of those like, would you like a book? Here, work really hard for it. No, this <laughs> is. I saw this, I was like, no. Yeah. And Lauren's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at, okay, so here's what it is. It's called the Unsung. Uh, Unsung Hero Weekend with For King and Country. So if you're the grand prize winner of this thing, are you sitting down, Ron? I am. Sit down. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting more down. <laughs> the grand prize winner of this contest is going to receive round-trip airfare for two to Nashville, Tennessee, two nights of hotel accommodations. You get to mm-hmm. attend a private advanced screening. Well, not private, but, you know, exclusive advanced screening. Yeah of the movie Unsung Hero. Mm. You get to attend a private concert with For King and Country and a podcast recording. But wait, there's more. Holy mackerel. 250 bucks in spending money. That's nice. So so basically they're going to pay you to go on a trip and do lots of cool Christian things. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, uh, what else would you want? So what's the best way? How are people going to register for this puppy? Lauren, is it fly? Is that the word? Yep, they're going to text the word fly, 440-546-2255. That's the word fly. <laughs> text fly to 440-546-2255. Daria, you can't, you can't <laughs> sign up for this. You work here. Uh, I love 4K and Country. I know you do. I've met them. They're really nice guys. Now, wasn't that Christmas show that you and I went to, weren't they at that? Oh, no, I was no. there. And they weren't there anyway. Nope. It was somebody else completely. <laughs> nope. That was uh, We the Kingdom and Aaron Schust. Oh. Aaron, I didn't know he was there. See, Kingdom, He's con- the King, King yeah. Country, We. And Aaron Schust is from Western Pennsylvania, so he's not far. Boy, if I didn't know where I was right now, I, don't, I mean, maybe I don't. <laughs> right. So, again, if you want to enter for your chance to win, just text FLY to 440-546-2255. You might be the grand prize winner of that puppy. It's pretty mm-hmm. fun. And, uh, yeah, coming up in just a minute, before it's too late, because we had Cher, I wanted to talk about this story that I saw about the Oscars that were just last weekend. There was one particular acceptance speech that I thought was not only pithy but remarkable Hmm. in its implications for Christians. We're going to get to that here together in just a few minutes. Prayer works. How much does the Bible mean to you? Are you grateful for God's Word? Here's a prayer to consider by the late author and theologian, Dr. Warren Wiersbe. Gracious Father, we realize that only that word that we practice is truly ours. We're thankful for a book that is infallible. We're thankful for a book that we can read that gives us truth. We're thankful that as believers, we don't have to search for truth, we have truth. We're thankful that every word of the Word of God is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now, Father, help us to love the Word more and live the Word more. For Jesus' sake, amen. To learn more about prayers of gratitude, visit moodyradio.org slash prayer. It's not insurance, and that's a new way of thinking for some families. Christian Healthcare Ministries is a credible way to meet family health care costs affordably, biblically, and effectively, whether starting or growing your family. 
serving families as a nonprofit healthcare sharing ministry for over 40 years, CHM has offered families the freedom to choose how they would like to meet healthcare costs. Be pleasantly surprised and find answers to your questions at chministries.org slash moody. That's chministries.org slash moody. Brian. Mornings with Brian. Moody Radio Cleveland. 103.3. Six eighteen WCRF mornings with Brian. Don't forget, we've got the a big eclipse event coming up here as a team and as a radio That's station right. on April eighth. So soon, the total mm-hmm. solar full complete eclipse. Total mm-hmm. solar eclipse. Total d- nothing yep. I can do. Total eclipse <laughs> of the sun. Yep, happening on April eighth. We're going to broadcast the show live from Hope Church in Brunswick, uh, and then from twelve to five p.m. Hope Church in Brunswick has a special event. Uh, where they're going to have, you know, like food trucks and games, and they're going to, we're going to have Dr. David, not doctor, but David DeFelice there from NASA. <laughs> He's going to be doing his thing. And we're going to have a live broadcast where you can watch the eclipse from home or be with us there, yeah. where we'll give you the commentary, essentially. Yeah. Astronomer Jay Ryan's going to be with us, too, in the morning. Oh, we'll boy. give us pre-commentary. So for mm-hmm. more information, text MOON to 440-546-2255. 440-546-2255. So our team, I think it's called a cinephile, is Daria. Mm-hmm. Is that the right word for it, Daria? I think so. That's a new word for me, actually. <gasps> Sounds right. <laughs> I feel smart now. I think it's like people who really like movies and yeah, stuff. I, I think I figured that. And, and you're a big movie buff. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the major winner at the Oscars uh, last week, seven Academy Awards. 
was Oppenheimer. Well deserved. Yeah, it was Best Picture, Best Director, uh, Best Actor with Killian Murphy, and Best Supporting Actor with Robert Downey Jr. Plus others, you know, like Best Key Grip or <laughs> Best Whatever, <laughs> Best Boy. That's my favorite person. Best the best Key boy. Grip. <laughs> what do they do again? The Key Grip. They are moving stuff. They, I mean, they're they're doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Well, you need that. Yeah. I mean, you got to move big stuff. So what was your review again of Oppenheimer for those who didn't actually see it? I mean, and from a faith perspective as well. Oh, mine? Yeah. Uh, It was it was phenomenal. What I loved about it was it presented um, Oppenheimer in a very nuanced way. And it didn't really have its own opinion on what kind of person he was. It let you draw your own So, like he was a good person. Was he a good person who did bad things or a bad person who did good things? Mm -hmm. He was a very flawed person. Yeah, and they didn't even necessarily have a position on the dropping the atomic bomb, which is the whole thing is about. Mm-hmm. It's a very controversial historical decision, uh, and you just see the tension of the scientists. Yeah, especially he is very guilt-ridden after the dropping of the bomb and actually starts lobbying, uh, I think, Congress about trying to get laws in place. And then he has this catastrophic fall from grace because everybody in the scientific community kind of turns their back on him. It's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say there's definitely adult content in there. Watch it at your own risk. Oh, yeah. Don't have your small children watch it at all. Definitely an 18-plus movie. Yeah, but I think it's possible for followers of Christ, depending on who you are, to either fast-forward through things or or watch them, depending on who you are. And that was a fantastic film. Thank you. I bring it up because uh, here's, here's how this one particular article from Inc.com puts it. Robert Downey Jr.'s award stood out. He says, by my account, Oppenheimer was Downey's 82nd movie role. Wow. Spanning more than 50 years before finally winning an Oscar. Hmm. Given how long he's had to think about what he might say if he won, I had a feeling <laughs> there might be some, something profound or interesting or at least memorable in Downey's acceptance speech. And right out of the gate, he didn't disappoint. And the guy says there were seven words from his speech that he thought was a brilliant lesson in success. Now, before we get to that, to the uninitiated or to the young, you may not know how troubled his life has been. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. is the son of late director Robert Downey Sr., no surprise, <laughs> uh, and <laughs> who was a famous guy. And he made his debut at age five in one of his father's films. He was a popular actor in his youth, but his career was plagued by setbacks, largely because of episodes brought on by addiction. Among the lowlights, he was arrested in 1996 for having wandered into a neighbor's house while on some kind of bender, and passed out in in some 11-year-old kid's bedroom. Oh, goodness. Now, don't think anything shady there. I think he just was so yeah. wasted. Mm-hmm. He, he didn't know what house. he was doing. Yeah. Um, he also faced uh, gun charges and escaped from drug treatment. Eventually, a judge sent him, sentenced him to three years in prison for breaking parole on previous charges. Um, and so, and, and by the way, crazy enough, the first time he tried drugs, was when he was eight years old. His mm. dad gave him the drugs. Wow. Wow. Here, son, try this. I mean, I don't know what the conversation was like, but that's essentially it. Uh, he had a rough growing up year, many years growing up. So what did he say? It's very Robert Downey Jr. slash Tony Stark, if you know him. <laughs> They're the same person. <laughs> kind of sassy. Yeah, I honestly think he was just being an, an, a, a, a increased volume yes. version of himself. I honestly think they... <laughs> in part built the character around mm. Robert Downey Jr. Really? They they're just so similar down to their traumatic um issues with their mm. dads. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't much work for him to act in that film probably. I don't think so. That series. And for those who don't know it's Iron Man and if you don't know mm-hmm. I'd maybe turn off your radio and and go in the corner. I mean that movie came out <laughs> almost 20 years ago so spoilers are kind of <laughs> we're kind of past that. Right. So here he walks up to the microphone and out of the gate he says I'd like to thank my terrible childhood and the Academy in that order. (laughs) Isn't that funny? Yeah. It's very funny. I'd like to thank my terrible childhood and the Academy in that order. Okay, you say it's true. Yeah. What do you mean? I mean, I think, like we've talked about a lot of his roles, he's had to look back into his past to find the character. Yes. Like, there's a lot of (laughs) films about people with those same issues, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So the author of the article goes on to say, I think there's something very instructive about being able to go a step further from just saying I had a rough childhood to actually saying you're grateful for those experiences. Truly, it's the kind of act of gratitude that can be a prerequisite for true success and happiness, no matter what your professional calling is in life. 
Think of the hardest times in your life, the truly terrible experiences you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. Can you find a reason to express gratitude for them? Reach the point where you can do that, and I think you'll do, do well and be very successful. Do you think he's right, the writer and Robert Downey Jr.? Yeah, I do. I, there's a mark of maturity to be able to look back on things that have happened, for better or for worse, and say, if, it, if not for that, I don't know where I'd be. Mm-hmm. Now, it might be logically true. To what extent is that a biblical reality that we ought to look back with gratefulness on the trials and challenges we've had in our life? I mean, it's very biblical. You talk about the stones of remembrance. Exactly. Okay, tell us more about that for those who don't know. Um, I don't. Who is it? Was oh, well, it one a bunch of, the of people did it. <laughs> one of the Jays, um, where their God calls them to stack up stones mm-hmm. of where they were to remember where they've come from, and that you don't forget what like the trials that you've gone through. So because you've passed through this wilderness to get to this next place. Right. And oftentimes the great characters in the Bible are flawed characters mm-hmm. yeah. who their their flaws in the past shape them into who they are. Mm-hmm. Almost all of them, in fact. <laughs> well, and then even, I forget the specific ver- verse, but Paul talks about uh, in all things to give thanks. Mm-hmm. And I think for many of us, it's very hard to be able to look back on our difficult times. But I truly believe what our, our friends Ray and Nancy Kane have said before, it's that true growth really can only come through pain. Yeah. And I think spiritual growth in our lives comes when the Lord inv- sh- brings us to pain, the pruning of the vine, right? Mm. Can't be fun to be pruned. No. If you're a vine, but I'm not one, so I don't know for sure, but I'm assuming it's pretty rough. <laughs> now, that being the case, like we have an invitation to grow from that pain and let it turn us into somebody different and better, more conformed to Christ. And I I don't know where Robert Downey Jr.'s faith is. I would be surprised if he's a believer, but to be able to actually say that, you can tell he's come on the other side of it through recovery. Mm-hmm. But how many of us are truly in position to be thankful for the worst moments in our lives? The things that you would say, I wouldn't wish, wish this on my worst enemy. I've got a handful of things that I've processed in the last 10 years. I'm not quite there yet. Mm-hmm. I'm not ready to say thank you for them. Mm-hmm. I get it. Like I'm to the point where I go, okay, yeah, that was good for me. I've okay. learned a lot from that. I'm still kind of mad at you, God. <laughs> I'm <laughs> mad that I had to go through that. Are do you guys, where, where are you on some of those things in life? Anybody have that jump to mind right away? I mean, Daria, you've been through mm-hmm. a lot in the last couple of years. Get married, move twice across yeah. the country. Um, you grateful for it yet? Yes and no. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, it's We've grown a lot, um, both as people and I think as followers of Christ, but it still hurts. Yeah, and... Like for me, when I, I did this early on where I started my career over at 28 and I mm-hmm. for, spent the better part of a decade thinking I was going to spend the rest of my life catching up mm. behind everybody else in experience and income. Because, <laughs> I, you know, usually when you when you build your career, you start out of college and you start just building on top of each other. Mm. I took a pay cut to go into ministry. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's hard to learn to be grateful for that. Mm-hmm. But again, you have to surrender to God's providence and be able to look back and see what you've learned from it. What about you, Ron? You've been through a lot in your just very short life. Yes, <clears throat> but the um, nothing comes to mind, and I think maybe it's it's part of my personality makeup, but I, I think, you know, the past is the past. I can't change it, and dwelling on it is like holding on to a rock that's pulling you down into right. the ocean, and if, you know... You, you want to hang on to it, it makes you feel good, you're drowning. you got to let go of that thing and get back up to the surface where you can breathe again. It just it does you no good to hang on to bad things that happened to you in the past. And yet, I would say acceptance and gratefulness are a little different, though, right? You don't seem mm-hmm. to be bitter about your past. No. You seem to have fully accepted it. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you have things where you're... You're, you know, they were really hard, but you're grateful. I can't think of anything. You don't dwell on the past much, so. No. And I'm a guy who's always pining about things that are, oh, it's <laughs> woe is me. No, I, I can't think of anything. Now, you know, somebody might say you started off pretty difficult in your marriage having uh, your wife was a widow. Mm-hmm. 
and had two, a couple of small kids, you launch right into it. You don't have that newlywed phase in your marriage, but you never yeah. look back. You never was like, oh, woe is me. Right. Again, I can't change it. I can't, you know, make those kids go back in her womb or anything like that. <laughs> so so it, it is what it forward. is. Yeah. No. I was an instant dad. Yeah. And you seem, you're grateful for it. You love your kids. I do. Yeah. Lauren, do you have anything like that? I mean, you guys just went through a rough thing. You you changed careers, had a baby, and moved. Mm-hmm. The three hard things all at once. You grateful for it yet? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> do you think you'll get there? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think so. But that's also, I'm, I'm glad that a couple of you are, are, are in that place because I don't know that we can imagine to be right where Robert Downey Jr. is, you know? I mean, he's had an extremely rough life. And he's had a lot of time to work through it. Yes. And people in, that have been through addiction recovery have processed a lot of those things with specificity and intensity. Yeah, and I think in a lot of those programs, you're required to think about how your past has helped your future, or how it's going to help your future, and how to be grateful for your past. And I think those of us who haven't done it really need to start that journey and mm-hmm. continue on it if you're on it, because in some way, isn't it doubting God's providence? if we're bitter and angry about things that have happened to us, no matter how terrible they are? Hmm. Or am I taking that too far? I know you're processing theological. I can see that look in your face, <laughs> Lauren. I don't think it's um, doubting God's providence. I think it's okay to have those emotions about it. And yet we should be on a pathway towards yeah. gratefulness mm-hmm. to see what what can God teach us through our, our worst pain. Mm-hmm. And I, I would say, Robert Downey Jr., if your dad offers you drugs at eight, yeah, you've got reason to be bitter and angry. Mm-hmm. He's grateful mm-hmm. for that and, his, and, the, and the academy in that order. <laughs> Fascinating stuff. At 631, we're going to get to a quick break here. Maybe you want to talk about that more on Friday. Uh, but for now, in just a couple of minutes, our good friend Dr. Philip Bernard from Cleveland Clinic is going to chat with us about a new phenomena that's popping up in the medical community, patient burnout. People oh. that have just are fed up with the medical industry. Hmm. They're like, I'm done with that. What does that even mean? And how do they do it? And what's, what are we going to do about it? Dr. Bernard has some answers in just a few minutes. How's your heart? I'm Nate Hunter, and this is Pause for Prayer. Presiding Bishop Michael Curry, the first African-American leader of the Episcopal Church, has undergone surgery to insert a pacemaker and is recovering at home. Bishop Curry just turned 71 and will continue tending to light duty work tasks until released to travel and increase his responsibilities. The pacemaker came as part of the treatments Curry is receiving for atrial fibrillation. News like this might be common for someone close to you, maybe even for yourself. Let's pause for prayer. Creator of the universe and creator of our hearts, we come to your throne bowing down to your greatness. You're in charge of a whole universe yet you care for us. You knew about Bishop Curry's heart condition, and you provided doctors to help him. You know about each one of our physical health concerns. You told us in Psalm 39, 4, O Lord, make me know my end and what is the measure of my days. Let me know how fleeting I am. You reminded Bishop Curry how fragile his body is and how limited his time is here on earth. None of us want to go through heart surgery or any physical ailments to be reminded of the brevity of life. We do need you to remind us continually about the weakness and fickleness of our spiritual hearts. As Christians, we're going to live forever, but here on earth, we need you to keep our hearts close to you. It's easy, Lord, for my heart to be drawn to finances, playthings, and earthly relationships. When this distracts my heart from you, please help me to be aware of this distance and to adjust my priorities and actions. Lord, we want Bishop Curry's physical and spiritual heart to keep beating for a long time. We pray this for ourselves also and pray that you are glorified during this earthly journey. We pray this in the name of our Creator, Jesus. Amen. 
for King and Country. Are you available the weekend of April 19th? Great, because we're thinking we'd like to send you to Nashville to meet them. Moody Radio will send you and a friend to a three-day event at the Country Music Hall of Fame hosted by Joel and Luke Smallbone. Pre-release movie screening of Unsung Hero, private listening party, podcast recording, and more. Enter to win at moodyradio.org slash unsung. No purchase necessary. Contest ends March 31st at midnight. Moodyradio.org slash unsung. Culture is constantly shifting, and the future seems discouraging and uncertain. You're doing your best to make sense of the strangest of times. Learn to live with the hope and courage of Jesus Christ. Read Daniel Henderson's book, Never Shaken, Finding Your Footing When the World is Sliding Away. Inspired by King David's example in Psalm 15, you'll discover how to build a meaningful life and legacy, all of it anchored in the unshakable promises of your God. Never Shaken, available now at moodybooks.org. Mornings with Brian, Moody Radio Cleveland, 103.3 at 6 to 9 a.m. Six thirty-eight WCRF mornings with Brian. Uh, thanks to all who participated in our share campaign. We're only about twelve thousand dollars away from one hundred percent. We're at like ninety-seven point six percent. So we'd be grateful for your support. Again, eight hundred six hundred nine six two four MoodyRadio.org. 
Special thanks to Dr. Philip Bernard, our ongoing friend here. He joins us. He's a family physician who specializes in dermatology at Cleveland Clinic. He's also the chairperson of the Northeast Ohio branch of the Christian Medical and Dental Association. Welcome back, Dr. Bernard. Thank you. Good morning, Brian. All right. So there's a new phenomena out there uh, called patient burnout. What is patient burnout? Well, uh, bur- patient burnout really is uh, the uh, the, pa- the patients uh, are getting a little bit fed up with the difficulties in accessing the medical system uh, due to both high cost, uh, lack of access, uh, and um, and uh, it's leading a lot of them to spend a lot more time going to the emergency room or uh, just skipping out on medical care that they desperately need. Um, so it was kind of interesting because I really, I know a lot about doctor burnout, but I, I really didn't know a lot about patient burnout. And uh, so it, it was a good uh, time to kind of look into this. Well, and you know, before we dig into patient burnout, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on doctor burnout. Somebody might be like, doctor burnout, what? So what what's the source of that? Well, you know, it's an interesting question because uh, if you look at data, uh, doctors historically have always been, you know, overworked. But I think the difference was uh, most of them in years past, and I'm talking, you know, 20, 30 years, uh, they were in their own practices. They were kind of calling their own shots. And so uh, you burnt out, uh, you, you, you spent a lot of time doing what you were trained to do, but it was not someone else telling you what to do. And I think that's, that's kind of a, you, you would think that that would make a big difference. The number of hours you spend um, working uh, towards something that you love, doing, what you, doing it the way you want to do it versus the way someone else wants you to do it. But I think it does play a role. And that today we may actually work less hours uh, than we did uh, 30, 40 years ago, but we just feel more stressed and more burnt out uh, because it's not us that's deciding how we're going to spend that time. It's, it's the system that we've become a part of. Well, you know, I've had other physicians tell me as well that uh, the amount of paperwork uh, for insurance claims and such has changed so dramatically over the years that I talked to one physician who said more than half of his time is paperwork, not patients. Yeah, and it's usually trying to get uh, something covered for your patient, uh, trying to get a, uh, uh, a coverage that uh, you know you think is reasonable, but the insurance company says it isn't. So you're spending time or your nurse is spending time on the phone. Uh, that generates paperwork that is faxed to you, then you've got to fill it out, you've got to send it back in, then you usually have to call someone and still, uh, you know, a pharmacist or someone else to tell them, yes, this patient really needs this, Uh, yes, I do have the paperwork here, yes, you can look at my records. And so it's a lot of time uh, that you waste on that, and and it's a good proportion of your time. Well, you know, on top of that, when it gets to to patient burnout, you know, as a Obviously, I'm not a doctor, so one of the things we can get frustrated with in our insurance, right, we, we can go anywhere we want to a specialist without a referral. So let's just say I need to go to a dermatologist, pick up the phone, call, I'll be like, yes, I'd like an appointment for a body scan. Oh, great. Uh, what's July look like? You, you can get in in six months. <laughs> and we just kind of go, what's the point? I need it now. Yeah. So why does yeah. that happen? So, well, it happens because, again, it's a structural issue. Uh, in this country, we actually see less patients per, uh, uh, based on our population than just about any other develop, developed country. Hmm. Uh, we only see about four patients a year. Uh, and if you go to Japan or to Germany or to one of the European countries, they're seeing eight to 12 patients a year, the doctors are. And so um, people have less access to the doctor here, and you wonder why that is. Uh, It's partly because we have an aging uh, physician population. Um, You've got people uh, that uh, are uh, uh, more chronically ill. They've got more chronic diseases. 
So they, they don't have just one or two problems. They've got seven or ten problems that you're dealing with. And so you've got people with lots of multiple with, with multiple medical problems who are only seeing the doctor four times a year. That's going to create frustration uh, because there just aren't enough doctors. There aren't enough. We've added a lot more physician extenders, nurse practitioners, PAs to the system. But I have to say the problem is there just aren't enough uh, people in the pipeline who, who, who are becoming doctors. That's really the big, big problem here right now. And those who do don't stay in primary care. They go into specialty care because of the, the high cost of uh, educating uh, people here, because we don't have a national health care system. We don't have a coordinated system. It's piecemeal by state. It's piecemeal by region. And so uh, there's no coordinated way to do what we need to do to take care of patients efficiently. And I'd have to blame it on that, really. Wow. It's 645. Our guest is Dr. Philip Bernard from Cleveland Clinic. He's also the chair of the Northeast Ohio branch of the Christian Medical and Dental Association. When we come back, we'll continue chatting about patient burnout, which is a, uh, a, a growing problem in the medical community. You can secure your master's degree in clinical mental health counseling from Moody Theological Seminary. Study at the Chicago or Plymouth, Michigan campuses. Be equipped as a servant leader who can transform your community. The graduating class of 2017 had a 100% job placement and a 100% pass rate on the National Counselor Exam. You'll be equipped to meet the needs of others while you reflect the character of Christ. Get started today at moody.edu slash counseling. That's moody.edu slash counseling. Let's see, if something costs less, but people are happier with it, that sounds like something to look into, and that is MediShare. And maybe you've heard switching to MediShare to pay for health care can save many families up to 500 bucks a month, and that's huge. But it's also true people are way more satisfied after making the switch, too. The member satisfaction rate for MediShare is double that of the typical health insurance plan. Double. MediShare works, too. It's been around for 30 years. Members have shared more than $5 billion of each other's bills. People love having telehealth and a huge nationwide PPO network. So, yeah, really, you can save a ton and like it better. Imagine being happy with how you're taking care of your health care. So if you're self-employed or part of the gig economy or you just want a plan you're happy with, you can call right now and get a price within two minutes. See what you can save. This is a very, very smart use of two minutes. Here's the number you need. Call 877-58-BIBLE. That's 877-58-BIBLE. 877-58-BIBLE. Join the conversation by call or text at 440 440- Five four six two two five five. It's mornings with Brian on Moody Radio Cleveland. Six forty seven. Who specializes in dermatology with the Cleveland Clinic? He's also with the Christian Medical and Dental Association. He's been chatting with us about patient burnout and how many people are, as strange as it seems, kind of giving up on seeing a doctor. And when they they're sick, they just go to urgent care or the ER. Um, you know, one of the issues that might be tied to patient burnout that I love to hear the physician side of this, um, you know, we're, we schedule an appointment, you wait six months, you get the appointment, you're told to show up 15 minutes early so you can fill out paperwork, you fill out the paperwork, you're early, and then you have to wait another hour to see the physician. Uh, but I think it's only fair if you hear the doctor side of this, right? I'd have to imagine that has to be a scheduling issue out of your control. Is that fair to say? Well, I have to say that uh, the scheduling is a little bit difficult and dicey these days, uh, and that's because coming out of COVID-19, uh, I think that a lot of people lost uh, a lot of administrative and uh, you know, uh, 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 secretarial help. Um, and as you've seen in every other area of life, there are people that are missing. Yeah. And it's caused the system to kind of everything it slows down. If you tr- if you want to have something done, your a fix up to your house, your wait is longer. Uh, if you want, uh, you know, the things you normally could do in 2019, everything takes longer because people have left the system, the work system, and it's the same thing. If you call and try to get an appointment, you're waiting longer just to get someone to answer the phone yep. to or, to schedule the appointment. Uh, you know the the 
the mistakes that are being made are being made because there's there's new people who are taking the job of someone who knew how to do it for 10, 20 years. Um, and, and, you know, mistakes are being made about scheduling. Um, you know, that happens to me all the time where uh, I get the wrong patient on a, on a morning where I'm supposed to be doing surgeries and I have a regular patient on the schedule. I'm like, this is, this is my surgical day. What's going on? Um, and it, it, it's happening more because we're kind of sputtering out of a, of a time when we kind of, before COVID, we knew what to do. We had the staffing. We had the system. Now it's like we got to rebuild it again. Um, so I think that's a part of it. The other part is that uh, uh, the doctors are feeling uh, the the pressure of seeing patients consistently every 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, and if a patient's been waiting for six months for an appointment, you know, he wants to have other, he or she wants to have other things also looked at. Right. And you're, you're kind of challenged to, okay, I've only got 15 minutes. You can't say that to the patient. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> right. uh, and so you're kind of taking a little bit longer than you should. The next patient's coming in a, late, a little bit later. Uh, and so it, it sh it's just a system that is not run well. Uh, because of things that, uh, uh, you know, patient expectation plays a, a, a big role in this. And I, I really feel for my patients because um, I really have seen the difference. Uh, it, by the time I've walked in, they're already feeling, okay, he's not going to spend much time with me. Um, I'm going to have to talk fast if I want to get all of my questions answered. Uh, it, it's just a, a, a more tense environment than it has been in the past, which is unfortunate, and it takes away from the, the doctor-patient interaction at that time. So what's the what's the fix moving forward, do you think? I mean, that's a huge question, but I'd imagine you've been yeah. thinking about this. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, the fix is we've got to put more people through the medical system uh, to educate them. We need more, we need more uh, medical schools uh, we just don't have enough for the aging, uh, retiring population of physicians. I'm 66 years old, and uh, it's I don't see enough of the young physicians coming through. Uh, a lot of the old, older guys are holding on into their, you know, and normally they would be retiring about this time. And part of the issue is, you know, you you don't have, uh, you just don't have uh, uh, the help that you need. You are working longer than you meant to work, and uh, um, you know it's 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 just a it's a difficult it's a difficult situation. But you need more people coming out of medical school. You need to educate more primary care physicians. Uh, you need to uh, you know uh, we might it might mean that doctors are are uh, less compensated than they have been in the past. I mean, I know that sounds like a bad word for me to say with other physicians listening, but I do think that if you look at other countries, the doctors are not paid as well. They actually see more patients than we do during the day, uh, but they're working in a system that is less fractured than ours. Um, and so the patients seem to be happier, but the big so that that would help. The other big thing that would help is we need to deal with our chronic disease issue in the United States. We have the highest level of chronic disease in the world because of the way that we eat. Uh, you know, we don't eat well. Our nutritional pattern is terrible. I hate to to, to you know to, to kind of you know push on this too much, but it's really a, a nutritional issue, especially for people over fifty. The, the 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 chronic disease burden in this country is skyrocketing. It's getting worse. It's related to the way that we eat, the amount of you know the 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 low fruits and vegetables in our diet, the lack of activity, physical activity, a lack, the the excessive use of alcohol, uh, the the amount of sodium and saturated fats that we eat. All of that plays into this whole problem. So it's not something that can be solved only by the the, uh, the the structure, but it also has to be uh, resolved as we start to get healthier ourselves so that 
we don't have to go into our 50s and 60s and be so chronically ill with, you know, seven or eight diagnoses. Yeah, you know, I was talking to a friend who was diagnosed a number of years ago with type 2 diabetes. He ended up meeting with uh, the, the dietitian, and he was really committed to changing his, his dietary habits. Uh, and the dietitian was just, like, pleasantly surprised because, in their experience, nobody will change their dietary habits. <laughs> they just want medication. Do yeah, you see that? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's part of the problem uh, because it we all want you know our society is a quick fix society. Um, just fix it, doc, and uh, tell me the pill to take. I don't even know what the pill is. Just you know the white <laughs> pill, please. Just give me my white pill. And so we we don't take enough responsibility for our own health and for our the state of our health. Um, that's got to change, or else this is we're not going to be able to solve this problem. Um, not with this fractured system that we have. Yeah, you know, I, I have to wonder as well, you you brought up we need more physicians, but now when you look at the cost of education, to have to pay yeah. six figures just to be pre-med with a four-year degree, I right. can't imagine why that would seem attractive to anyone. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I, I hate to give Canada or these other countries with national health care system, uh, 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 you know, so much kudos, but the truth is that... Um, to have to pay your way through medical school and then be expected to uh, uh, go into a practice, uh, you know, three hundred, five hundred thousand dollars in debt uh, is, I think, a system that's 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 going to that cannot last. Correct. Um, yeah. And, and it and it forces a lot of people who might be interested in primary care to go into specialty care because they're wanting to pay that debt off. Right. Um, and so it's just every part of this system makes very little sense uh, if you're trying to take care of, uh, of a nation of, of, of unhealthy people who, who need to change the way that they approach their health. So it's, it's a system that I don't know what the answer is. Everyone's trying to just get through it, I think. Um, we need some real policymakers in Washington that are willing to address these issues uh, and and not you know be so uh, you know localized and regionalized in their approach. Yes, great points again. Uh, Dr. Philip Bernard's been our guest. He's a family physician who specializes in dermatology with Cleveland Clinic. Also the chairperson of the Northeast Ohio branch of the Christian Medical and Dental Association. For more information, go to neocmda.com. Uh, and if folks want more information about, I think you have an upcoming banquet, right? Yes, on April the 13th. We're inviting all Christian physicians, uh, allied uh, to it. Please, if you don't have our, uh, if you'd like to know more about it, please uh, contact us. Yes, again, neocmda.com, or just reach out to us. We'd be glad to connect you. Dr. Bernard, as always, we're grateful for your time and your expertise. Thank you, Brian. It's been a good uh, morning. You bet. 657 now on WCRF. We're going to talk with the Farinis not too far from now. Stay tuned. Mornings with Brian. Moody Radio Cleveland. 103.3.
It's 7 o'clock on WCRF. We got uh, Ron's news coming up here in just a moment. And we're also going to chat about one parent thinks she's figured out how to get her kids to listen to her. Well, like I'm convinced. Sign me up. Uh, yeah, I, right? <laughs> no, I mean, if I've told my kids that if there were some sort of fire in the house, many of them would perish for <laughs> the inability to get up and get going. The inability to turn their ears on. It's like, oh, wait, I have to, I have to, I have to brush my teeth, Dad. It'll be five <laughs> minutes. Oh, okay. What? You know, I mean, there's so many times where, ugh, but this mom's figured it out. Oh. But do you like her solution? That's the question. Uh, and and then also, uh, we've got a huge contest running right now. So cool. It's unbelievable, but it's true. It is the Unsung Hero Weekend with For King and Country. The grand prize winner of this contest receives round-trip airfare for two to Nashville, two nights of hotel accommodations. You get to go to an advanced screening of the movie Unsung Hero. You go to a private concert with For King and Country, and you attend a podcast recording and if that weren't enough, they, they're like, here's 250 bucks to, you know, buy food and, mm -hmm. I don't know, tchotchkes. Yeah. And you get an, an entrance into the Country Music Hall of Fame. Whoa. Mm -hmm. that For too? three days. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Well, why wouldn't you want to take a chance and just submit your, your entry for this <laughs> thing? All you have to do to enter to win is text the word FLY to us at 440-546-2255. Text FLY to 440-546-2255. We'll send you back a link to get registered. Go for it. All right. Mm -hmm. It's uh, 7.01. It's time for Ron's News. Mornings with Brian on Moody Radio Cleveland, WCRF Cleveland, WVMS Sandusky, WVML Millersburg, WVMN Newcastle, WVME Meadville, WVMU Ashtabula, and everywhere with the Moody Radio app or at moodyradio.org slash Cleveland. Five states will hold their presidential primaries tomorrow. It's 7.02. I'm Ron Eastwood, Moody Radio News. Donald Trump and President Joe Biden already have enough delegates to clinch the, their respective parties' nominations, but they'll be looking to add to those delegates in Arizona, Florida, Illinois, Kansas, and right here in Ohio. Biden will also be competing with uncommitted voters who will be protesting against U.S. military aid to Israel. The Secretary of Health in Pennsylvania says the $4 million the governor has allocated in his budget could serve as a pilot program for a wider medical debt relief program. Governor Josh Shapiro has proposed using the $4 million to cancel as much as $400 million in medical debt. And the owner of a violin stolen last week from St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Cleveland Heights has increased the reward for the instrument's safe return to $2,500. Alan Chu said the 2018 Jason Visseltier Baroque violin was taken between 1.30 and 3 p.m. on Friday, March 8th, during a rehearsal lunch break from the church on Fairmount Boulevard. I'll be right back with sports and weather. When God calls us, when he nudges us into the unknown, it can be exciting, but also overwhelming, risky, and terrifying. Whether you're a stay-at-home mom, a corporate leader looking to follow God's calling, or a retiree who knows you have more to give the world, you need to read Taking the Five Leaps by Rachel G. Scott. It's doable help to get you to the purpose that God has planned for you. Taking the Five Leaps. Get your copy at moodybooks.org. That's moodybooks.org. In sports, the Blue Jackets got walloped by the Jets 6-1, to the Penguins crushed the Red Wings 6-3, to and the Columbus Crew shut out the New York Red Bulls 3-0. Here's your Moody Radio Cleveland forecast. Partly sunny with scattered snow showers this morning, then this afternoon becoming mostly cloudy with numerous snow showers. Accumulation should be around half an inch. High temperatures in the mid-30s. And at last check, we did have flurries still in Cleveland, where it's 31 degrees. Flurries in Akron and Canton, 27 degrees. Cloudy skies in Mansfield, where it is 27 degrees as well. It's time for your moron moment. A study has found that virtual reality could reduce post-traumatic stress disorder in veterans. 
The approach tweaks the brain's reaction to trauma, offering a more effective treatment than traditional therapies. In just six 25-minute sessions, vets have reported big-time relief, and that's really amazing. These men and women have risked their lives at the direction of our country. It's time we find a way for them to get their lives back. And that's your Moron Moment. And you'll find that on our Facebook and Instagram. It's 7.05. With Moody Radio News, I'm Ron Eastwood. Mornings with Brian. Moody Radio Cleveland. 103.3. Seven oh eight WCRF mornings with Brian. I was walking out of church uh, yesterday, and as we leave the sanctuary at my church, uh, you know, some of the elders and the preacher will will greet you. You mm-hmm. know, a lot of churches do that. One of our elders, my friend John, sees me. He goes, "Hey, I got a nickname for you." I go, "What's that?" He goes, "Baby face." <laughs> <laughs> and then a whole bunch of people came around me and were like, "Yeah, I didn't even think you'd have it today." Yeah, the, the the big shaving is happening on uh, Thursday. Thursday. Mm-hmm. And they're like, wait, it's going to be on the live stream? Yep. What time? 8 a.m. <laughs> You're <laughs> so excited about this. And Ron is part of this thing. Yes, I am. Is he going to go first, age before beauty? Is that how we're going to do it? Yeah, we may as well. It'll be faster. Yeah. Because you're two strokes and my hair is gone. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, that's I'm not true. Wrong. You've got, I mean, the whole back and, and sides. You're going to, that's getting shaved down too. Yeah. It was all due to the generosity of various donors. Um, Hazel and Nick. Yes. I, I can't even really believe it, but they did it. They wanted that. So uh, my beard will be shaved in the 8 o'clock hour on the live stream on Thursday and Ron, mm-hmm. Ron's hair. And Daria will be singing and playing her guitar on Friday. On Friday, mm-hmm. yeah. Thank you to an anonymous donor. What time? 
We haven't decided yet. Okay. All morning. <laughs> it's just a show. It's no, just... I'm not doing a concert. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, see, for me, it's been a. There's a lot of talk in the house about it, and it's going to just oh, really? be. It's going to be a lot. Like I'm not even certain there's a chin in there still. Yes, there is. <laughs> like I was telling Daria, what if there's a giant open wound and we all get sick? She's like, Brian, hair doesn't grow in open wounds. Right. Mm. I haven't seen under here in years. I don't know what's going on in there. You would know if there was an open wound. Okay. Because <laughs> there'd be a bald spot. <laughs> and it would hurt. Hair when it gets shampooed. wet when it gets stuck. Please stop. <laughs> well, can't, you might, You're not, that's not just a camera. Like, that's my face right here. <laughs> Please. Just look at it. I can't see in there. I'm moving it around. You can't see in there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, word on the street is you want a lock of this. All of you would like no, a lock no, framed. No. No, I don't. That, that could have been an additional fundraiser. <laughs> Who would like a lock <laughs> of yes, my beard so hair? Hundred dollars, hundred dollars. I told Sarah that you're gonna, especially you ladies, you're gonna see random beard hairs in your office on your computer. Oh, we'll have to vacuum in here. There will be like. No, no, I will be placing it there when you're not looking. No, we will swiftly clean up the floor and throw it away before you can do anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, no. Yes. Yeah. Do do we have a barber lined up yet? We have some in the works. There are discussions. Okay. We're waiting to hear back from one. I've put some feelers out as well and haven't got anybody committed. All right. They're all like, oh, that sounds fun. In a perfect world, it's going to be a straight edge. We'll see. Uh, and we'll mm-hmm. see if we can convince Lauren to shave her head too. But I'm not doing that. All right. Shifting gears here. Uh, the Washington Post highlighted a woman who's figured out how to get her kids to do stuff. Now... It's not that kids are maliciously rude. Most kids would be probably like mine, and here's how it goes. About an hour before we're going to leave somewhere, here's what Dad does. Kids, we're leaving in one hour. (laughs) Get ready. It's time to get ready. Okay, Dad. And then 30 minutes later, all right, 30 minutes. It's time to go, okay? Go to the bathroom. Get your stuff. You know, you do all, okay, Dad. Then I give a 15, and then a 10, and then a 5, and we get to the time it's time to leave. Let's go. What? What? It's time to go right now? (laughs) I'm not ready. (laughs) Did that happen to you? Yeah. They're sitting with the controller in their hand watching their video game. Yeah. And every, every warning they acknowledge, you know, but it takes them totally by surprise when the time runs out. So this is not just me. No. This is a, a blight across first world countries, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> How did you solve this? You, you and Dana raised three well-adjusted adults. It you was, fixed it. Yeah, it was just a matter of time. They eventually aged out and got out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> so this, the solution was they, they turned 18. For the most part. <laughs> oh, when, great. when they start getting jobs, they, they realize they have to be at work on time or they lose the job. And so that, you know, maybe cost a couple jobs, but that that gets in their psyche then that I got to get moving. Are you seeing this yet in in Trey? Yeah, but he doesn't like to understand time yet. So he has a good excuse. Yeah. So we set timers for him. Mm. Have you have you and Eddie thought through this? I mean, millennials often think through parenting strategy, like how will you get your children to be to be ready and listen and pick up and clean? Oh, I don't know. Because the cleanup song doesn't always work. No, when right they get older. now it's, um, <laughs> well, your teacher says that you clean up at school every day, so I'm sure you can do it at home too. <laughs> <laughs> what does he say to that? He's like, he like, cleans up just like one thing. <laughs> <laughs> right, they do it at school. Yeah. Have you tried the cleanup song? No, he sings it to himself while he's cleaning up. Mm-hmm. The one thing? Yeah. <laughs> I have to break it down to like, okay, clean up your magnetiles. And then once that's done, okay, now clean up your puzzles. Just like one thing at a time. Yeah, for for a while, Sarah had one that worked where she'd get a stack of playing cards. And she'd be like, all right, pick a card, any card. you know, And they'd pick one. It's like an eight. You got to go pick up eight things. Oh, and they go pick up eight things and come back, draw that's a new good. card. Well, it worked for like yeah, until, two times. Yeah, until it doesn't. And I was like, Mom, put the cards away. We're not doing that. I bet Daria was ready right away, weren't you? Oh, yeah, it was my mom and I waiting on my dad and my brother. (laughs) Let's go. Come on. Go be late. But it's true. Like that same pattern I described. Yeah. (laughs) And I can't fix that. But this lady says she did. Here's how she describes it in the Washington Post. 
Please get dressed. We have to leave in five minutes. I pleaded for the 20th time, my patience waning. You still need to brush your teeth. You haven't packed your backpack. We're going to be late for school again. This was a typical weekday morning in my home last year. Unfortunately, my first and third graders couldn't seem to grasp the morning routine. All three of us have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and we struggle with time management and executive functioning. As a result, my kids were late to school. A lot. During the last month of school, when I was at my wits end, the principal called and asked me to come in oh, no. to discuss with me my kids' excessive tardiness. She said, and I knew something had to change. Yeah, when you, as a mom, get called to the principal's office, <laughs> that's bad. you know it's a problem. <laughs> Fortunately, she was understanding, and I left the meeting with the beginning of an idea. By the first day of school this year, I had completely transformed our lives, the mornings and the evenings. Hmm. I accomplished this by... Paying my kids to perform basic tasks. Okay. Were you in? I've heard this done before. Usually there's, you know, like a full dollar for this and 50 cents for that. And so the the more expensive chores, the kids rush to do them. And then they're like, well, that one's only a quarter. I'm not going to bother doing that. Meanwhile, I just spent $398 in groceries at Walmart. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, yeah. I don't know, what do you want me to do? More money? Yeah. If your kids are, are asking you for... Um, an allowance so they can have some spending money. This is one way to counter that and say, okay, your allowance is based on your work. Just like mom and dad go out to work, you have to work to earn money. So here's, you know, here's your chore list and you could either do it, do all your chores and you get whatever you decide is the allowance. I imagine today it might be more like $25 a week. Yeah, not happening for me. I got five kids. Yeah. <laughs> so Ron seems to like the idea mm -hmm. paying your kids to do basic life tasks, brush your teeth, pack your backpack, make your bed. Good idea. 440-546-2255. We'll analyze this more together in just a minute. Thanks to support of listeners and Hawkins Sales. They've been serving the electrical industry nationwide for over 30 years. More information about Hawkins Sales is at hawkinssales.com. Moody Radio is thankful for support from listeners and businesses like Deerfield Ag Services. They help in adaptation of new technologies and techniques of farm and business management. More information about Deerfield Ag and how they can help is at deerfieldagservices.com. You don't have to put your life on hold to get your degree from Moody Bible Institute. Moody offers flexible online classes that feature a unique ministry-focused education. Study the Bible and theology anytime, anywhere. You'll benefit from the world-respected faculty and a connection with classmates from around the globe. Invest in your future and get your bachelor's or master's degree from Moody Online. Learn more at moody.edu slash online. That's moody.edu slash online. If I say sunshine, picnics, chocolate, this is your heart rate. If I say share your faith in Jesus with a friend, your nervous heart rate may sound like this. Jesus did call every one of us to share his good news. So why not invite your friends who don't really understand the gospel to listen to Moody Radio? We share the simple gospel simply. So let our witness help your witness. Helping you take the next step in your walk with Jesus. It's Mornings with Brian on Moody Radio, Cleveland. 719, thanks to all of you who participated in our share campaign last week. We're so blessed by your generosity. 2,431 people gave. Over $498,000 has been committed. We only have about 11000 left to go to hit 100%. We're at 97.69. If you still want to give, it's not too late. 800-600-9624. Text the word SHARE to that number. Or just go to moodyradio.org and you can give today. moodyradio.org. So a lady at the Washington Post, her, her name is Gia Miller. She had the same problem that I think all humanity has, which is no matter how many times you warn your kids, they're never ready in time. Never. <laughs> if I'd be like, the house is on fire, quick, get out. They'd be like, just a minute, I got to, uh, I'm not ready. 
So uh, she says what she does, pay her kids. She pays them, and it changed everything. So here's how she does it. Uh, they have a positive reinforcement chart. She said my kids needed more structure to accomplish the daily routine, so she created a chart that broke down uh, the broad goal of getting ready for school into small steps so my children would know what's expected of them. I also defined what was expected uh, of each of them in the afternoon. Mm. And she wrote it on the chart. Ron was kind of implying that's probably how it's done. Mm-hmm. And then there is a certain dollar amount tied to each task, anywhere from 10 to 25 cents. You've got a smirk on your face. What is some, some funny texts. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, will you do this with Trey? You're no. going to start paying? No? no. No. It works. No, I'm not doing that. Why will you not do that? Well, f- several things. Number one, I made a little, um, I did some math, okay? So oh, let's, just talk about, let's just talk about the morning. These are just morning tasks right at the top. Brush your teeth, get your backpack, shoes, clothes, bathroom, shower, okay? Okay, yeah, uh-huh. Um, for one day, and that's for the morning, $1.25. Okay. Now we're talking about you have to do it again in the evening tasks. Two fifty a day? For two kids, you're paying a subscription for your kids to do like basic hygiene stuff. <laughs> two fifty a day for one child, so five dollars a day for one for two children. I and I only have two children. Figure out my problem there. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I don't even pay tolls to get to work. You think I'm going to pay my kids <laughs> to brush their teeth? No, you that'll, don't. That'll add because up because then I have to pay for the dentist when their teeth rot. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh-uh. Yeah, I have a real problem with bribing your kids to do basic tasks. Like, I understand it's probably easier for you to do that, and I'm sure there are different challenges that go with having a child, multiple children with ADHD, but you are they're never going to learn to do it for themselves. They're doing it because of a reward, and you're going to come into problems down the road because eventually you're going to have to outgrow the system, and they're like, nah, I'm not doing it because you're not paying me. Like, no, they should, they should brush their teeth because that's what we do. That's how we take care of ourselves, and because mom and dad said it's time to brush your teeth. And see, we don't we don't do allowance for a lot of reasons. But when the kids, when the older kids, especially when they, I guess when they get to be 10, 11, 12, they start saying, "Well, I need money to go hang out with my friends." No problem. Here's a couple options of things you could do. You can scrub the toilets. You can go move those rocks outside. <laughs> and they'll be like, "Okay, uh, how much for moving the rocks?" I'd be like, five bucks. Well, no. Nah. <laughs> guess you don't want to hang out with friends. Yeah, and then they would choose to be like, "Nah, I guess I won't then." What? When I was a when I was a kid, and this was just in the summers, because my mom knew we needed something to do besides sit in front of the TV all day. I got two dollars a week, and I had to do a ton of like a ton of chores every single day, two bucks a week. Wow. Yeah, my my mom had a summer where she, for every thirty minutes, my brother and I in the summertime didn't fight. We would get a fifteen minute ticket for the television. <laughs> <laughs> she hilarious. made little tickets because <laughs> we were constantly fighting with each other. So I just now, think, I don't know, this is a house we all live in, and we're all going to participate to take care of that. And this is, like, not just taking care of the house. These are, like, personal tasks. Yeah. And even, like, chores are taking care of the house. We all live here. Mom and dad work to pay for this house. Just taking care of the house yeah. is just something that we all have to do. You're part of a family. We're part of a family. And see, I'm we- going to give you tasks that are, you know, age-appropriate. And a lot of times, three-year-olds want to clean the toilet, so let them clean the toilet. Right. <laughs> or they want to unload the dishwasher. They want to help bake or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Let them do it. Age appropriate, yeah. But I'm not going to bribe my kids to do stuff around the house, especially things that like brushing their teeth and getting their backpack ready. Now, this writer responded to that. She said, one of the biggest concerns I hear from parents is, isn't this bribery? Says psychologist Cindy Graham. Basically, yes, but then I asked them how many adults will go to work out of the kindness of their heart if they weren't getting paid monetarily. Bingo. Reinforcement is built into who we are. It pays to go to work. We don't do it for free, even if society needs it. Kids are no different. Positive reinforcement can also work to eliminate attention-seeking behaviors, like your child interrupting you while you're on the phone, avoidance behaviors, and things like that, um, because it reinforces the positive things that they're doing. Now, Ron, Ron was just jumping in there. Yeah. Tell Lauren why she's so wrong. Tackle well, her. She's not necessarily wrong. Um, if you've got compliant children, that that might really work for you. Children who, you know, are all about pleasing mom and dad. But if you've got kids that are less inclined that way, 
you need more motivation to get them to do the work. Like you mentioned, five bucks to move some rocks, big deal. I'd, I'd jump on a job like that, but no, won't do it. Yeah, some <laughs> kids, kids like, yeah, I'll we'll skip it. So, um, yeah, sometimes you need more motivation, and and sometimes the, their motivation is just to go broke. But but you need them to learn to be responsible adults. And some kids, are, you know, the non-compliant child, it's hard to come up with a way. Besides, you know, if you just don't pick up your clothes. Uh, cockroaches and mice and everything else are going to come living in your in your bedroom. Do you like that? And they probably will still be like, yeah, so what? Yeah, and you know, one of my aversions to it is I don't think I'd be able to keep up with the complicated system. You got to make your chart. You got to make mm -hmm. a new chart all the time. Did we check off the chart? Did we do it right? Did I forget? Now we have a dispute. No, I did that. I didn't see you do it. I did it. You got to check it off. I get my 25 cents. Like I can just picture the logistics of this being oh, a yeah. nightmare when mm -hmm. you're when you're trying to get yourself ready as well. Um, I understand the concept. It's a psychological concept if you're curious to dig into it. Um, operant conditioning versus classical conditioning. I think you can find ways to motivate your kids and do positive reinforcement without cash. How about stickers? Like they get to put a sticker yeah. on their chart and that's their reward. But teenagers don't care about stickers. Right. Okay, well, then you have to find a new system for teenagers. <laughs> I mean, at some point, is it is it fair to say that a kid's disposition, they may just have to learn the hard way when they grow up, and you're always just going to be late? Yeah. There are some people that are adults that are just late. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean... And some people are okay with that. Some cultures. You know, when I was on Guam, the Filipino folks were just irrelevant the clock was irrelevant to them you know if, if you said the party starts at six if they got there by 6 30 that was fine they didn't make a difference meanwhile you were offended <laughs> yeah and i'm sitting around waiting and there's only three people at this party and you're like well i don't know where everybody is <laughs> yeah i don't know i mean we, sarah's tough enough where she's had times where she's like listening we're, we're leaving in 10 minutes if you're not in the car, we're leaving without you. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we've done it. Or like, but, oh, if you're in pajamas, sorry, then you're going to have to go in your pajamas. Yeah. I gave you 500 warnings. Yeah. Someone did text in as like, okay, so what if you do this and then you ask your kid to clean their room and they're like, mm, I don't need the money. That's what I'm saying will eventually happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so there's no perfect solution, but I mean, you... One of the perfect solutions, right, P people used to try to, if you use the old Bill Gothard system, you would just, phys you know, you would spank your kids or whatever until they do first-time obedience. Mm. And then you've created little robots that do whatever you say immediately because they, they're scared of you. I don't know. Does that sound like a great idea? That's not good either. No. Tina said, I've heard paying kids to perform chores. Good idea, except I'm paying to live in this house, and now I have to pay a group of people to clean the place they live in for free? Not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I get it. Yeah. Uh, we got, Look at this. Is this Cindy? The Cindy Farini? The Cindy Farini. The Cindy Farini. The Cindy Farini. What's your take on this, my dear friend? Well, all I'm going to say is, who's in charge here, people? Who's in charge? <laughs> <laughs> I would not put up with most of this, is all I'm going to say. When my kids were little, I figured out what was the carrot in their life. So, for instance... Oh, good. Talk about Kathleen. When, <laughs> well, it wasn't just Kathleen. It was... It was uh, well, it, it doesn't work with Joey, but that's a whole different situation, okay? But with my girls, what was their carrot? So just for one example, you know, if, if they wanted to go to youth group because that was their favorite thing, that's where they got to hang out, if they didn't practice their piano for the half hour a day that they were supposed to, that I would keep track of, I'm sorry, I'm not taking my time to take you to have fun. Mm. So if they didn't practice, there were some days on a Wednesday before youth group, they were sitting at the piano begging who could first be playing and practicing <laughs> before before they could go. And I just felt like this has to be, you, you have to be firm. And if, if and, and not that I didn't, you know, have to call the kids more than once because that's kids. <clears throat> but I think you have to take control. 
And one of the other things I did was we did give allowance, not much, but we did give allowance. And I only had to do this maybe one or two times. I went around the house at the end of the day because I said, you know, the house we live in all day long. But at the end of the day, if it's not cleaned up, I take the stuff that's not picked up. At allowance day, they got their allowance, and then the book that or the, the box that I would have in front of me had all the stuff that they left laying around. They had to pay me for it. So here's your whatever allowance, and now this gum wrapper is, you know, 50 cents or a dollar. You could tell immediately who it belonged to because they were mortified that they had to pay a dollar for mm. something I had to pick up. And so, you know, whatever, what is your kid's, what is your kid's motivation? And that takes some time to learn it. And once you learn that, then that's what you dangle over their head. And why would you, why would you as a parent always bend over backwards to make their life so much easier than yours. <laughs> right. I don't want to have to work harder. When I, when I was teaching, it, it was this principle I had, I don't want to work harder than the students. I shouldn't have to do that. I have a degree mm-hmm. and a job. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but, okay, Cindy Farini, thank you for calling. Actually, stay on hold because we're going to get with you and Joe here in oh. a minute. How's that sound? All right. Sounds good. That sounds good. Okay, uh, we're going to get to her and Joe for My Marriage Matters. In fact, they're going to talk to us about Disability Awareness Month here in just a few minutes. Uh, Many of you don't know the story of Joey, who she just brought up. We're going to get more on that. Uh, Before we go, Tiffany asked a good question, and I'm I'm curious, just a roundtable response to this. Is there a particular Bible verse that pops up when you you think of this dilemma? Whatever you do, do unto the Lord or um, work not for, as not for human masters, but for the Lord. Okay. Any, anything from you, Ron? I can't think of one. And see, I don't. And but here, here's the thing: I don't, I don't work like that. I know it sounds crazy. I don't think you can pick a verse for everything in life. Mm-hmm. I don't think you can go like, "What's the answer?" Oh, here's the verse, and now we know which light bulbs to use, mm-hmm. and now we know how to handle this particular situation. I think we have principles to be guided by. Um, and here, here's one principle. We're all sinners that fall short of God's glory. You can't positive reinforce or negatively reinforce the sin out of your children's lives. That's true. And so they're going to constantly be doing this. It's not going to be perfect. Um, uh, and you also don't want to, I think there's some guidelines in parenting. There's, uh, you know, train up the child in the way they should go and they won't depart from it. There's also don't provoke your child to anger. And I, and I think that goes to all the various responses we've had. But no, I, don't think I don't think there's a particular passage. Lauren, you feel that way too? Yeah. Mm, she's nodding. It's 7.33. <laughs> time to get to a quick break. When we come back from that break, Joe and Cindy Farini, they're going to chat with us a bit about Disability Awareness Month. They know intimately what it's like to be a caregiver for someone with disabilities. Dr. Tony Evans says what sometimes passes for prayer really isn't. He'll explain today as we spend two minutes with Tony. Before a major sporting event, they will often play the national anthem. Now, the national anthem has absolutely nothing to do with what's getting ready to happen on the field. It is put there as a place of national honor, but totally unrelated to what you came there for. That's an add-on. For many of us, prayer is like the national anthem before a sporting event. It gets it started, but has absolutely no connection to what's happening in our lives. We do it because it's tradition. It's paying homage while being totally disconnected from the field of play of our lives. Prayer is relational communication with God. And the goal of prayer is to draw from heaven into history. The goal of prayer is to get eternity to make a statement in time. It is to make heaven visible on earth. In the Bible, prayer is a lifestyle and not merely an event. If I were to say to you, breathe without ceasing, (laughs) you would understand what I meant because if you cease breathing, you'd cease. This is how you wrote that it is a lifestyle, not merely an event. Learn more about that lifestyle and the blessings it brings into your life. Get details on Tony's CD series, Igniting Kingdom Prayer, available online at TonyEvans.org. 
Then join us next time for Two Minutes with Tony. Kayla was in a panic when she called CareNet's Pregnancy Decision Line. When she asked about her choices, we explained all of her options. Kayla said, but I'm already at an abortion clinic. I'm in their bathroom. Our Pregnancy Decision Line coach asked Kayla what she wanted to do. She said, I want to leave. Kayla left the abortion clinic and we connected her with one of CareNet's life-affirming pregnancy centers where she could get free services and learn more about her pregnancy and her options. What you need to know is that the federal government is working on plans to fund a national abortion hotline using your tax dollars to refer women to abortion providers. The government's hotline won't tell women about all of their choices. It will be a referral line for one choice, abortion. We need you to join thousands of others who are pro-life and sign the CareNet pledge to stand against the National Abortion Hotline. Sign the pledge now at care-net.org. That's care-net.org. Good morning, Cleveland. Thanks for choosing us to help you start your day. It's Mornings with Brian on Moody Radio Cleveland. Mornings with Brian, Moody Radio Cleveland, 103.3 at 6 to 9 a.m.
741, Mornings with Brian, WCRF. A special thanks to all who supported us in the share campaign. Mm-hmm. Phones are still open. Uh, website still available to give. We're at about like 97% right now. 800-600-9624, moodyradio.org. Yes, you, my friends, deserve the applause. All right, now uh, joining us live on the show, they join us regularly for their segment called My Marriage Matters. Uh, they spoke nationally with Family Life's Weekend to Remember for many years. Joe and Cindy Farini, welcome back. Thank you. Thanks Hello. for having us. All right, it is Disability Awareness Month, and you, uh, rightfully so, want to talk about strengthening marriages for couples caring with someone uh, with special needs, whether it's a child or an adult mm-hmm. child. Uh, in this case, there may be some listening who don't know some of your story with Joey. Could you take us back to his birth and how you found out he has special needs? Yes, I would be happy to. I first would like to say thank you very much to you, Brian, and your team for allowing us to be able to share this along with a couple other people that we have sent your way and, of course, with uh, Dr. Gersovich as well, because I think we often look at different um, kinds of months that we can celebrate, and this is a, a particular situation where we don't hear a lot from people with disabilities or about people with disabilities. And so this particular group happens to be one of the most um, risky groups in terms of poverty, social exclusion, and discrimination and violence, as well as along with children and and, uh, isolated elderly people. So thanks for letting us have a voice here. You bet. Um, And so we, you know, we, we could go through statistics and things like that of how many people have a disability and how many of us are caring for them. But, you know, it was never on our blueprint uh, when we first got married uh, or when we were talking about getting married. It was never on our blueprint to think that we would have a child with special needs. Um, Both of us, uh, you know, are relatively intelligent in terms of our abilities uh, cognitively. Joe was a dentist. I was a teacher. Um, We felt like we were coming into a marriage and we would have children. You know, that could be productive in society and doing the things kind of like perhaps we were doing. And so when our son was born, um, he came just almost on, almost on his due date. I went into labor on his due date, but he took quite a long time to make his present. So he, <laughs> he, he, he was the next day. But um, yes, it was a difficult labor, but probably his disability probably did happen in utero, not necessarily during the birth. And so when he was born, he just, he looked perfect. He, he was a good little baby, but he was not hitting his milestones. And you could tell in his eyes, Joe was able to see more so than I was. You could tell in his eyes, he wasn't tracking. Things weren't, things weren't lighting up, if you will, like you see in other children. But because he was our first, we didn't really notice it. And so it probably was about six to nine months when he wasn't able to do anything. He could not even lift his head yet um, that we began to see ourselves, along with the doctors, that things weren't going the way they should. And so it began a journey, especially in those early days, which, you know, neither of our daughters were ever um, in on that part of Joey's life, of course, but so many therapies, so much work, so many doctors, so many tests. Um, And, you know, like we said, it wasn't on our blueprint. And so all of those things were added to everyday life. And he's 42 now, and a lot of things really haven't changed. The child that we had when he was born is still the child that we have at 42. And, you know, I, I can't imagine the emotional strain that put on you individually, let alone your marriage. What kind of stressors did you see pop up in your marriage relationship as you were getting Joey diagnosed? Well, as Cindy said, this was not part of our blueprint. And uh, <clears throat> so we were, you know, going along a, a journey that we thought, you know, we're just going to track with everybody else who has children. And and once we began seeing that Joey was not hitting those mile markers that we were hoping to see, and uh, and we quite honestly, <clears throat> excuse me, this is got to keep in mind. It's 42 years ago, and uh, and our doctor was basically saying, you know, he'll catch up, he'll catch up, he'll catch up, yeah. and uh, and so I just put on my my research hat and I just began doing research on these symptoms that he had, 
and I basically, uh, Cindy and I, we, uh, we we made an appointment with our doctor, and uh, and I and I laid out what I found, and I said, this is the diagnosis I think that my son has. You know, he has cerebral palsy, he has epilepsy, he has he's going to be mentally retarded. And the doctor looked at me, he says, yes, you're right. He got up and walked out. Oh. And uh, that was that was the extent of that first engagement with a professional. That there was a there was a problem with our son, Joe. And uh, and so you know what do you do in that situation? You just you uh, stare at each other and you're <laughs> like, really? Yeah, exactly. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you just you know the tears start coming down and and you just begin at that point to engage in the process of, of addressing the needs of of what your child has and. You know, I think one of the most sobering things, and probably the biggest strain on our lives and our marriage, was that you know, this was a lifetime diagnosis. You know, I, I would talk to people who who thought they were, you know, saying you know somewhat intelligent things to me, and we would say that you know Joey's have some problems, and and you know their their response to me was, well, my my child, you know, has I don't know asthma, and he has bad allergies, or he has, and it's kind of like, yeah, I get that, but that's not a lifetime problem that you're going to have to deal with uh, in terms of 24-7 care. Yeah. And so that was uh, pretty pretty sobering for us. And, you know, for me personally, I, you know, you know as a dentist, I, I stayed pretty busy in my practice, and, and we were doing pretty good. And, and one thing that the reality that hit was that it, it didn't matter. It didn't matter one bit how much money I made. Didn't matter how successful I was, I could not fix my son, and uh, that is the most frustrating thing I could think of at the time. And and that obviously has carry over into your marriage relationship. And I think uh, what we see because we're very engaged with this, the special needs community, we see tragically, you know, the divorce rate is very high in this community. And I think this is one of the reasons why it is is, is the frustration piece. That uh, you know, that's not what you signed up for, so to speak. I mean, you hate to reduce it down to those terms, but uh, that basically is is what it comes down to. Is is that I did not sign up for this. I'm getting out, and and, and they leave. And uh, it's not you. You often think it's the husband who would leave. It's not always that way. Hmm. So tragic. Which is som- sometimes surprising, you know. Yeah, it's right. uh, it's 7.49. We're going to take a really quick break with Joe and Cindy Farini. Uh, again, they spoke nationally with Family Life's Weekend to Remember, and they've been doing marriage, My Marriage Matters on this radio station for many, many years. We're chatting about, for Disability Awareness Month, how having a child with disabilities can impact your marriage relationship. This is David Harms with the ministry India Partners, and I have walked through the red light districts of Mumbai, India, numerous times, and trust me, it is dark. Young girls have no joy in their eyes because they feel they have no future and they'll be stuck in the trade for the rest of their lives. But once they get into a safe house run by India Partners, well, just listen. That is God at work which is why for the last year, we've shared powerful stories of safety, rescue, and care happening through the India Partner Safe Houses. These girls are safe from harm, well cared for, and introduced to the transforming and healing love of Jesus. Learn more about the power of rescue and care in a safe house at indiapartners.org slash moody. If you're 65 or older, you know this, seeing your healthcare costs go up and up is frustrating. And maybe you were just notified that your Medicare costs are increasing again, or you're just tired of the massive deductibles. Well, here's some good news. There's a program that can really help with this. It's MediShare 65 Plus. It's an affordable, reliable alternative. You can choose any Medicare provider. You get telehealth access anytime you need it. And MediShare 65 Plus is a low cost option for those with Medicare Parts A and B, and it fills in the gaps where Medicare stops. MediShare is a Christian healthcare community that aligns with your faith. People actually pray for you, they encourage you, and it's proven too. It's been going strong for over 30 years now. So call now. You can get one low monthly price for up to 10 years. You're not stuck with increasing costs. You can do something about this today. Call MediShare 65 Plus. Find out how much you can save. Call 833-59-SHARE. That's 833-59-SHARE. 833-59-SHARE. 
Mornings with Brian. Moody Radio Cleveland. 103.3 at 6 to 9 a.m. 7.51, Joe and Cindy Farini with us. Again, they spoke nationally with Family Life's Weekend to Remember, and they've done My Marriage Matters with us for many, many years here at WCRF. We're talking about how marriage can be impacted by someone with disabilities in your immediate family, especially caring for a child. They've uh, had their son, Joey, living with them for the last 42 years as he has a series of disabilities. So they've become experts in this and speak all over the country on this issue. Uh, Joe, you were mentioning how, as a dad, you're like, I can, you know, someone comes in with the worst dental problem, I can fix that, but I can't fix this. Um, Yes. How does that realization and probably the anger and sadness that comes with that impact your relationship with Cindy? Well, well, those are very true statements, and, and, and it was incredibly frustrating uh, to realize I can't help my son get better. And, uh, and, and unfortunately, that reality develops into attitudes and frustration, and that leads to anger uh, that's birthed out of these frustrations. And and because, you, you know, you can't fix the problem, and neither can your spouse, but your spouse becomes the easy target, if you will, to express your frustration. And, uh, and so because of that reality, you, know, you, have, to, you have to be able to uh, address these in a healthy manner, these situations that you're dealing with on a, on a daily, regular basis. And, uh, and so I think that's one of the things that I'm so thankful for Cindy because she is – someone who was a very organized person, and she was able to really, you know, take care of the order in which things had to be done, therapies, doctor's appointments, and so on. And so, and, and my job was basically to try to keep up with her uh, at that point. And, uh, and sadly, I mean, I would say one of my biggest regrets in, in our marriage was that early on, uh, I was not, in my opinion, as, as, on, on, on call, if you will, for Cindy, as I wanted, as I should have been. Um, my thinking at the time was that, you know, hey, I have a practice to run. I have to get this practice up and running. I have bills to pay. I'm going to go and I work sometimes six days, six days a week, you know, and uh, it, uh, it would, that filled my day. But when I'm looking back, I was being totally honest with everybody. I would say, you know, going to work was actually an easy escape. Yeah. Uh, to avoid the reality of, of having to deal with a special needs child. Uh, I can fix your tooth. That's not a problem, you know, but I can't fix my son. And, uh, and so that, that's, that's the reality that I, I, we see so many times in this community is that uh, until you're both on the same schedule and you're both dealing with the same reality, it's going to be difficult to, uh, to have a marriage that's going to be a healthy, thriving marriage. But it can be done. It can be done. Yeah, and you know, Cindy, how, how did you do it? I'm sure people ask you that. You've been married 44 years now. How did you stay married with the stress of caring for Joey your, your, your entire lives? Well, um, certainly the Lord has played an ultimate part of our lives, and we would not have the marriage we have. We probably wouldn't have the family that we have, the life that we have without submitting and surrendering to the Lord everything in our lives, and that includes Joey. Um, You know, sometimes I look back and I think I don't know how I did it, and I do have to say I'm actually mentoring a a younger-than-me mom right now through some things with a special needs child, and one of the things she just said yesterday, and I hear Joe say all the time, he said, sometimes I think we make it look too easy, and sometimes I don't think we talk about it to the depth with other people that we would like to because— most people don't really want to listen to it. And so how did we do it? I think we just put one foot in front of the other and trusted the Lord to get us to the place we needed to be. And sometimes I look, I mean, honestly, sometimes I will look at Joey and I'll, I'll say to Joe, usually privately, obviously, I'll say, sometimes I can't even believe it's our life that we've been caring for him for so long. And you just do it. You do it because you love him. And you do it because um, he is your responsibility. And so, you know, sometimes when, when I think, how did I do it? I honestly don't know how I do it. I do remember one, da- one time being down at Metro Hospital. I was pregnant with Christina. My stomach was as big as the ball I was carrying for Joey to bring it home for therapy. And um, 
pushing a uh, stroller and thinking in my head, is there anybody here who could help me? You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, oh. and um, but but in but in the reality, like I just did what I could do. I got to the car, I got everything put away. The kid, you know, the the child's in the car. Joey's, in, you get everything done the way you need to do it. I think for me, the biggest thing has always had to be. I've always had to check my attitude because when I'm tired and frustrated. That's when it's easy, as Joe was saying, to get frustrated and angry. And, um, you know, this this wasn't any of our plan for this to be a part of our life. And yet I can't even tell you um, how much Joey has changed every one of our lives. And I think it's for the better. Um, do I say that every day? No, because when I'm frustrated or I have to do something, everything we do for ourselves, we do for Joey. Yes, he can walk. He can talk a little bit. Um, but he is not, he would not be able to be on his own. And, yes, could he shave? Yes, he could shave, but one spot. He's not going to get <laughs> all of it. You know, So everything takes an extra bit of care. Um, and I will say, too, Joey has a very – kind personality he does have he does, yeah. another another side to his personality as we all do and when that happens it's very difficult um, because it's hard to unwind him but you know you you go through really just one step at a time and i i think for us we've had a great community of people he's now has a program he worked for 15 years in a, a very highly supervised group was great for him. It was a cream of the crop job. Uh, now he's in just be done a program very near us that has been a great blessing. And you just put one foot in front of the other. And I'll tell you, if you don't have a support group, you have to be the person that goes out there and finds one. And if it's going to all be about you and you have it the worst and, you know, you can't do anything without this or that, and that's going to be you in a group, you're not going to last long because everybody feels that yeah. way, you know. And so it has to be a team effort working together. Um, and I thank God that I have a spouse that I can do it with because some don't. And that that's an added an added burden, really, to a life that's very challenged as a caregiver. Yeah. Yeah, again, Joe and Cindy Farini have been our guests. We've barely scratched the surface of uh, what it means in a marriage relationship uh, to be caring for someone with special needs. But I know you you two have spoken on this a ton. You've written on it. If folks want more resources, how do you recommend they find them? If they would come to cindyfarini.com or joefarini.com, our books, um, the topics that we talk about are there. Um, And actually, if they want to get in touch with us, That's the best way because there may even be somebody who'd like to have a conversation at some point, and we're always open to that. If we can help somebody get from point A to B, we're there to help. And um, we're grateful for what the Lord has done in our life, and and if we can help somebody else, we hope that we can. Thank you for that and for sharing your journey. Please say hi to Joey for me. I haven't seen him in a while. I love that guy. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. God bless you both. It's now 8 Thank o'clock. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah. In fact, I'll, I'll never forget, I went to an event with Kathleen, who I used to be on the air with here, mm-hmm. uh, and Joe and Cindy and Joey. It was a banquet, and I was getting really antsy, and I was like kind of shuffling in my seat, no surprise. Mm-hmm. I look over. Joey was having a great time. He was way better behaved than me <laughs> at this event. <laughs> and he really is just a tenderhearted guy. Yeah. And they've done amazing things with him. and. Yeah, if you have, if you're a parent and, and you're in a marriage caring for someone with special needs, don't do it alone. It's too difficult. Mm-hmm. Uh, their, their advice is good advice. And if you're a, a member of a church and you've got a family or families in your congregation with a special needs child, reach out, see what you can do to help. Yes. It doesn't necessarily mean you become their best friend and you're with them all the time. Maybe you can just, you know, help them by picking up groceries or any number of other smaller tasks that aren't a big burden on you, but can really save them a lot of uh, heartache and energy. That's right. Well said. Yeah. It's now 801. Time to get to a quick break here. When we come back, we're going to meet some new friends from a place called the Creation Education Museum. Mornings with Brian on Moody Radio Cleveland, WCRF Cleveland, WVMS Sandusky, 
WVML Millersburg, WVMN Newcastle, WVME Meadville, WVMU Ashtabula, and everywhere with the Moody Radio app or at moodyradio.org slash Cleveland. The Biden administration's legal case over social media moderation is headed to the Supreme Court. It's 8.01. I'm Ron Eastwood, Moody Radio News. The justices will hear arguments today over whether federal officials violated the First Amendment when they urged platforms to remove false or misleading posts. The case stems from attempts by the administration to curb COVID misinformation. A free medical clinic is coming to Ashtabula County. The remote area medical clinic will offer free medical, vision, and dental care for anyone who needs it. The clinic will be held on April 13th and 14th at Lakeside High School, and services will be offered on a first-come, first-served basis. And Cleveland's City Planning Commission took two big steps Friday to update zoning and building code requirements to encourage dense, walkable, transit-oriented neighborhoods. In the first of two unanimous votes, after nearly three hours of discussion, the commission recommended that City Council approve the implementation of a new form-based zoning code in three pilot neighborhoods, Huff, Opportunity Corridor, and Detroit Shoreway slash Codell. I'll have sports and weather in just a moment. Pursue your passion of shepherding, teaching, and ministry leadership with a Master of Divinity from Moody Theological Seminary. Study systematic theology, pastoral practices, learn to analyze scripture through the lens of the original Hebrew and Greek texts. Take classes when and how it's most convenient for you on campus in Chicago or Plymouth, Michigan, or online wherever you are. Get started today at moody.edu slash mdiv, moody.edu slash mdiv. In sports, the Blue Jackets got crushed by the Jets 6-1. to one. The Penguins clipped the Red Wings 6-3. to three. And the Columbus crew shut out the New York Red Bulls 3-0. Here's your Moody Radio Cleveland forecast. Partly sunny this morning with scattered snow showers. And then this afternoon, mostly cloudy with numerous snow showers. Snow accumulation should be around half an inch. Highs in the mid-30s. Currently, we have flurries in the Cleveland area and our temperature is now 30 degrees. Akron and Canton cloudy skies, 27 the temperature. In Lorraine, Illyria, it is cloudy and 30 degrees. It's time for your moron moment. A study has found that VR could reduce PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, in veterans. The approach tweaks the brain's reaction to trauma, offering a more effective treatment than traditional therapies. In just six 25-minute sessions, vets have reported big-time relief, and that's really amazing. These men and women have risked their lives at the direction of our country. It's time we found a way to give them their lives back. And that's your Moron Moment. Moron. And you'll find that on our Facebook and Instagram. It's 8.05. With Moody Radio News, I'm Ron Eastwood. Mornings with Brian. Moody Radio
everybody who gave to our share campaign. We're super grateful. Um, we only have just a little, a little ways to go yet. About $12,000 left to 100%. Puts us at about 97%. You can still get your gift in today, 800-600-9624, or go to moodyradio.org. And now joining us in studio for the very first time, a couple of guys, David Robles and Nick Reinfeld, who are both with the Creation Education Museum. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Well, thanks for having us. All right, so some people may not even know there is such a thing. Tell us um, where you are and kind of the story behind the origins of the Creation Education Museum. Sure. So in 2005, uh, we opened uh, William Sanderson's The Founder, and he had five guys with him, uh, renting out a small little place underneath his financial building. So we're at the corner of uh, Cleveland Maslin Road and Minor Road in Copley, Ohio. And it was about three different businesses, a printing studio, a financial business upstairs, and then below was the start of a Creation Education Museum. Hmm. The idea was to influence the community and to show them that there is an alternative to evolution that is biblical and sound. And in 2016, there was a massive revamp. We now have the entire building. Oh, wow. And the Creation Education Museum is a lot bigger, brighter, and uh, full of information about creation science and how the biblical model is supported by the scientific evidence. I feel like if in 05, you would have predated the other Creation Museum, wouldn't you? We do. And we are still actually in Ohio. They're in Kentucky, technically. Right, right, right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And and it would be no, if, uh, you get, you're not directly tied to each other, it sounds like, either. No, we participate together. I mean, there's there's uh, uh, studies and things that they do that uh, we, we sort of connect to. And we're not meant to replace them, either. We're, we're just right. a small community um, location for Northeast Ohio. And, and really, we want to get people plugged into Answers in Genesis and, and other organizations such as that. Now, uh, when, when it comes to why this happened, your, your founder, it was just seeing a need to respond to, to teaching in evolution. Is that where it came from? Yeah, he had a vision for having this place where you could physically come, see the evidence, understand that there was a legitimate backing. It wasn't just a story from a book, mm -hmm. but there was legitimate evidence that pointed all people to the creation and thus the creator. Well, yeah, and, and talk more about why that matters. I mean, we, we live in an era of skepticism and growing secularism. So why does it matter that people can come and see evidence for themselves? For me, Brian, that, that's the most important thing is why. Um, I got involved because I am a, um, an artist, I'm a graphic designer, and I own a small business in Norton. And uh, I sort of participate with uh, Dave and, and um, my brother, uh, Todd Steyer, and Bill Sanderson. Uh, they give me the science, and what I do is help display that artistically. Oh. Um, but it was always the why. Uh, why are we involved? And uh, we, we live in a, a rough world. We live in a tough world. Um, the world is run by uh, Uncle Screwtape, and uh, all he wants to do is undermine everything that we're trying to do uh, in our educational system and so on. And a lot of it is a Trojan horse process. And uh, to believe in evolution, um, it really does take faith. Uh, to, from, from manner to man, uh, is, there's no proof. There's no, it's just, it, it's, at best, it's conjecture. And uh, what we want to do is we want to teach people that uh, you, can, you can support the Bible with science, that science aligns with Bible. The more that you study science, the more it actually points you to the Bible, and the more that points you to the Bible, that points you to Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Yeah, you know, we've had eras in the church, I think, where we have a reputation of being anti-science, and I think there are a lot of Christians who are, who are such. Why is that a bad idea, to be anti-science as a believer? It's not anti-science, uh, uh, and, and maybe that, that has happened because, uh, you know, years ago, um, you know, they, they, didn't, they didn't know enough. Right. And, and it really, the science just, it's sort of, I'll use the word evolve. It, it evolved for the, well, God didn't do it. And uh, there's just a trend. God didn't do it. How did it happen? Well, it didn't happen from God, so God didn't do it. So what Christians have done over the last 50, 60 years, have, they've, they've written books, they've done studies. Um, scientists um, uh, have, have implemented all these ideas and looked at the information from a different direction and we've realized, and, they've, and we're teaching each other, that you don't have to be afraid of science. Science right. is, is not synonymous with evolution. Um, science is um, something that's debatable. 
you can reason and, and we can debate. And, and that's one of the problems in our country is we are not allowed to debate or even be able to show people creation. Uh, and there's so much science that backs it. Yeah, it's, it's one of those basic concepts I love where uh, here on the show, we love talking about issues related to science because in theory, if you look at Romans 1, Paul said himself that one of the best evidences for a creator is to look at the creation. And if science truly is observing creation, which at the end of the day, it's what it's doing, observing the natural world, it's going to reflect God. Amen. Why wouldn't it? Amen. Because he made it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's 8.15, time for a quick break. Uh, in studio with us today, David Robles and Nick Reinfeld. They're both with the Creation Education Museum. We'll g get you more information about uh, how to find them and what you'd find there here in just a couple of minutes. I'm a song here. For King and Country, are you available the weekend of April 19th? Great, because we're thinking we'd like to send you to Nashville to meet them. Moody Radio will send you and a friend to a three-day event at the Country Music Hall of Fame hosted by Joel and Luke Smallbone. Pre-release movie screening of Unsung Hero, private listening party, podcast recording, and more. Enter to win at moodyradio.org slash unsung. No purchase necessary. Contest ends March 31st at midnight. Moodyradio.org slash unsung. Did you know the average person walks nearly 2,000 miles a year? Now think about the millions of children around the world who risk disease and miss out on opportunities simply because they walk those 2,000 miles without a decent pair of shoes. For the past 25 years, Buckner Shoes for Orphan Souls has provided more than 5 million pairs of shoes to kids in some of the most vulnerable communities in the world. That's over 5 million opportunities to put a smile on the face of a child and show God's love to boys and girls living in desperate situations. Many times, those shoes introduce families to Christ-centered programs, helping them rise above poverty and achieve their God-given potential. I'm Rob West, inviting you to provide shoes and share the love of Christ with children around the world and here in the United States. Find out how you can make an impact at GiveShoesToday.org. That's GiveShoesToday.org.
820 WCRF. Mornings with Brian in studio with us for the very first time, David Robles and Nick Reinfeld from the Creation Education Museum. And uh, it, we had a teen listener just uh, text in and say, oh, I got a friend who takes classes there. That place is great. <laughs> uh, so for those who aren't even aware, where are you exactly again? I know you brought it up a few minutes ago. Where are you again? And what would people find if they if they stop by? So we're at the corner of Cleveland, Maslin Road and Minor Road in Copley, Ohio. And if you stop by, you're going to have opportunity to take uh, fossil tours, animal tours with live animals, uh, rep- make replica fossils, see the Creation Education Museum. And during the warmer months, we actually have a two-acre play park with a bunch of oh, equipment for kids <laughs> of all ages. Yeah, okay. So um, I, I know you wanted to chat a bit about being fearfully and wonderfully made and how that, that biblical concept really plays itself out at your facility. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, it's uh, again, it goes back to the why um, that, uh, you know, we do live in a rough world. Uh, kids are being taught uh, strange things in schools these days. And, um, you know, it, it. you guys were talking about even earlier this morning on how to motivate your kids to do different things and, and, and so on and so forth. And, um, you know, when, you, when you're raising a kid and, and your children and you, you, you have that responsibility as a mom or as a father to, to lead them in the right direction. You're, you've got basically uh, 18 years uh, to pull uh, marbles out of a bowl. And when those marbles are done, they're, they're, they're off on their own. And it's a serious um, job that you have. And, and everything, um, it, it's, you're not playing checkers, you're playing chess. And, and, and when, when you devise a, a, a project or you do something with your children, it should be an educational pro- type of process. My father used to take me to a lot of museums I mentioned earlier that uh, I'm an artist, uh, I'm a business owner in Norton, but um, I'm, I'm a visual person, and Dad used to take me to museums, and that's where I really, really learned uh, in Chicago and Cleveland and all over the different places that he would go. We'd always end up at a museum, and and uh, th- that's what the Creation Education Museum is in, in Copley, Ohio, is uh, part of the Akron Fossil Science Center. Is It's a place to go to learn. Um, there, there's uh, Students are actually going there for uh, credibility on, on, on taking reports and things like that. Um, but it's important that children learn that they're not mistakes, that they're, that there's, there's not, you know, races, there's not division, that we are all children of Adam and Eve and that God loves us, that we are truly fearfully and wonderfully made. Um, and, and, and not to let children be set, pulled aside and say, you're something different because you're not, you're, you God loves you and he wants to have a relationship with you. I like the, the artist aspect of, of your part of the story, where I don't think people consider when they go to a museum how much art, artistic uh, influence happens in some of those displays. It's essential, right? It absolutely is. And, and being a man and, uh, you know, I, um, you know and, and a visual person, I, I, I know a lot of the young guys that are going through the, the museum um, are, are also visual. And they may not stop and read all the little information I have a hard time reading all the information sometimes because <laughs> right. it's deep. Oh sure. Um, and, and if you like that kind of thing, if you got an engineered mind or a scientific mind, it's it's there for you. But um, to take a little guy through there, um, you know, I would encourage the moms, and because I'm a dad, I encourage all the dads get off your butts. You know, put the basketball aside, put the baseball aside, put the soccer ball aside, and and teach your child about God. Uh, we, you know, God has certain attributes. And that's part of what the museum teaches us is that he's omnipresent, he's omniscient, uh, that he's all powerful. And, and to think that anything other than creation uh, takes away from that uh, definition that we know God as. And, and, and that comes back to who we are as uh, fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, there's, a, there's a certain amount of uh, comfort uh, in that. And there's a certain amount of, you know, if, if my arm is too long, if I'm too heavy, if I'm too short, if I'm too slow, if I don't read as good as the other guy, we're so competitive in our life. And but God loves you just the way you are. We were watching the snowflakes last night. We were watching a movie, and my daughter said, hey, Dad, it's, it's snowing. And I, I thought, you know, there's not an individual snowflake in there that's the same. But they don't compete. They just, they, they're, they're just beautiful in themselves. And that's yeah. the most important thing about that. I think God wants in our lives is that we know that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and he loves us, and he wants to have a relationship. And if there's anything that we get out of the museum, I mean, I love the science, like that's a cool, cool stuff, the geology is neat, the authenticity of the Bible is neat, 
but I want to point people to Jesus. That's that's my heart. That's my that's why I'm there. Yeah, and you know, I think without reminders, some of us will see it snowing and go, "Oh, great! I'm gonna have to shovel or whatever." No, no, it's it's a beautiful moment to see God's creative power. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, David. I know what one of the passions you have is that through the Creation Education Museum, you all can stand in the gap. Yes. What do you mean by that? So, it, as in the Bible, it talks about looking for a man to stand in the gap, and Really, what we want to do with churches is we want to get to know them, have a relationship with them, but also show them that while their job is teaching and edifying and evangelizing, they may not have all the resources, all the information about scientific discoveries that help boost that confidence. I know when I was only 17 years old, I had gone through public school, and I was never taught there was a difference than the evolutionary science textbook, even though I had been in church and I'd heard the Genesis account several times. I never put two and two together. But after I started to learn my creation science and saw how the, all the science brings in that support for Genesis, it opens your mind to so much more throughout the entire Bible. And so we want to be that, that person that stands in the gap or that organization that helps churches boost that confidence because these teenagers, these kids— they go through school and they get inundated with all of this information and they think, well, if the history book is true and the math book is true, well, the science book must be true also. Well, there is, there's errors in the science textbooks and they're pointing them to evolution. We can point them to creation. We can point them to what God actually intended. And if we can stand in the gap and help the churches do that, we want to however we can. We have speaker series. We have creation on the road. We'll go out and speak to churches in their con to their congregation, to their youth group, and explain this kind of stuff and show them that there is a reason to stand on God's word, and there's no other foundation that's more sure, more firm. Again, we've been having a chat with David Robles and Nick Reinfeld from the Creation Education Museum. Uh, as also part of the Akron Fossils and Science Center. So if folks want more information, they want to stop by and visit, uh, where can they get more info? Uh, creationeducationmuseum.org is our website address. It has all the information online there. It has our hours of operation. We also have a Facebook page and a YouTube page under the exact same name. Again, Creation Education Museum. And again, you're located in Copley, you said, right? Yes. So it's not that far away for most of us. Thank you again to both of you for your time today and for your good work for the kingdom. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, you Brian. It's just about 8.30. We have a break upon us. Uh, when we come back, uh, there is science coming to Northeast Ohio here. We've got a big event we want to tell you about. Plus, uh, it has to do with your laundry. And we're going to evaluate um, Ron and my cleanliness habits. Oh. I'm actually a little nervous. <laughs> we'll get to that here in just a minute. Welcome to Bible Q&A with John MacArthur, Bible teacher and author of the best-selling MacArthur New Testament commentary series. Well, it's hard to find a more clear command in Scripture than Ephesians 5.3, which says, Sexual immorality and covetousness must not even be named among you. Still, one of our listeners read that verse and wondered, what if a believer is struggling with sexual immorality? Isn't it a good idea to talk about that sin with other believers? Well, what about that, John? Does Ephesians 5 forbid struggling believers from getting counsel from other Christians for their sexual sin? When the Apostle Paul says that sexual immorality and covetousness must not even be named among you, he's not saying that you shouldn't talk about it with each other. He is saying you shouldn't be identified with it. In other words, people looking at you shouldn't say, oh, there's immorality there, there's covetousness there. Another way to say that would be, it must not be among you, period. It, it must not happen among you. It must not occur among you. It must not be seen among you. That's the whole point. Should a, a believer struggling with sexual immorality talk to someone else about it? Of course. Of course. Uh, confess your faults uh, one to another, and so fulfill the law of Christ. We need that kind of... Uh, mutual support. We need that kind of spiritual accountability that comes from openness and honesty with regard to sin. I don't think we have to parade everything. Uh, you know, Paul also said it's a shame to speak of things done in darkness. So, uh, you know, we don't need to be full disclosure and all the ugly details of sin. There's no virtue in that. Some pastors kind of celebrate talking about that. That's not necessary, but we need to be supportive of one another in our prayers. 
All right, thanks, John, and thanks to you for listening today to Bible Q&A with John MacArthur. If you'd like more in-depth teaching from Ephesians, visit MacArthurCommentaries.com. The words you are about to hear are taken from letters sent in by members of the Trinity Debt Management Program. Dear Trinity, today I'm making my final credit card payment. Before I came to you, I was in a constant state of anxiety and panic, but now there is hope for my family's financial future. Working with Trinity made me understand that I'm not alone. You really do help people. Your kindness will never be forgotten. Without Trinity's support, I would not have achieved my lifelong goal of becoming debt-free. We saved a lot on interest and penalties, of course, but the reward was the gift of human kindness. Trinity has carried me through a very difficult time in my life. You're amazing. I used to feel so anxious and hopeless. Now I feel grace and peace. God bless Trinity as you continue to help others become debt-free. If credit card debt has you down, call Trinity at 1-800-659-9838. That's 1-800-659-9838. Mornings with Brian, Moody Radio Cleveland, 103.3 at 6 to 9 a.m. Good morning. It's Monday. It's 835 and Ron needs to start saying goodbye to the hair.
Are, are you rubbing the back of your head a lot? And no. You, you I, better get a good feel of that right now, buddy. It's going on Thursday. <laughs> I feel it every day when I shower. It's like wet and soapy, and it's like, oh, see you later, alligator. See, you won't even have to shower anymore. No hair to wash. Oh, uh, <laughs> there are, I don't think that's accurate. That's yeah, not how that works. There's, there's no. other parts of the body that need to be cleansed from their sweat. We yep. all have to walk through Ron's area. We don't want it to stink. Right. Well, but he does have his own room. I mean, we could go the other way. <laughs> but now, okay, so if you if you missed it last week during Share, mm -hmm. somebody donated 2000 bucks for Ron to shave his head. Hazel. Hazel, thanks for that, Hazel. It's going to happen mm -hmm. on Thursday right here at the radio station. Somebody else donated $2,000 to get you to finally not just sing on the air, but sing and play your guitar. That's right. And dance no, a little bit. No, not dance. <laughs> she saw that coming. Wear tap shoes and nope. tip-tap a little bit with your toes. <laughs> no. Tap shoes. Listen, I am going to be monitoring my microphone, the live stream, my chords, my guitar, and my voice at the same time. What more do you want from me? You could do we'll a lot more on the at table, once. and she'll tap <laughs> dance on the table. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, get, get a, I would love to see the. Da, 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 da. You can kind of tap no. in, don't you? You get a hat and do the. Da, 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 no. no, okay. With St. Patrick's Day yesterday, I've been feeling inspired to learn how to Irish dance. Oh, really? I, I won't, but I, it looks fun. <laughs> you just felt inspired. You yeah. won't act on it. Exactly. So, Brian, you left out the best part. Someone paid five thousand. or Dave, why don't you tell the story from the beginning? What happened with Dave? Yeah, no one consulted me, but this is how Dave works. Dave mm -hmm. and I have this kind of relationship. We do this to each other. Dave Safransky's in studio. He goes, all right, I got a challenge. If one of you donates $5,000, I'll put in $5,000. He turns to me and he said, and he'll shave his beard. <laughs> and I was like, what? I didn't, excuse me? And yeah. everybody started laughing, and I normally would be like, no. I think the Lord intervened. I hedged a little bit. <laughs> I <laughs> I don't know what happened, but I yeah. somehow agreed to this. And I par partially was like, well, pff, who's going to do that? Right. And then somebody did. Nick did. Nick. Nick. <laughs> and his comment was funny. It's like, get a razor and pony up that money, Dave. Here you go. And he dropped down five grand, so ten grand. I told Sarah, and she was like, well, I mean, 10 grand, Brian, that's very generous. Like, what are you going to do? Not do it? So, yeah, Thursday, <laughs> this whole thing's coming off. My kids are nervous. They're already laughing at me. Um, <laughs> I, I could probably, somebody at church told me I could just get wire and glasses, mm -hmm. and nobody would even know it's me. Yeah. yeah. You used to have wire room glasses. I know I did. <laughs> But I don't you think it would be it's big enough change. I could yeah, go incognito. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd have to leave the house to have anybody, you know, notice. But right. That's the biggest problem. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back to the Irish dance bit. Now, isn't that isn't that gonna isn't that where you like don't move your upper body and yeah, you just fling like all your legs feet. all yeah. over? Isn't that was that Michael Flatley, Lord of the Dance? Yes. That's right. <laughs> da, 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 yeah. Like kicking his feet everywhere. You could do that. No, I couldn't do that. But I would like to. But you to want learn. to. Yeah, it'd be fun. I mean, I'd be good at the move, not move one half of your body part. It's already hard <laughs> enough to be like if you're dancing, like, hey, the arms are going. Wait, okay, the hips have to go. Exactly. And then the legs just have to go. Feet. This is just. Yeah. You should do that. And okay. then you could, somebody could donate for you to to do that on, on camera. They need to finish out with $11,000. Finish see. out share. Okay. She one is gift. not very flexible. And I'm not nope. saying physically, I'm saying. <laughs> Interpersonal. But she kind of agreed. My feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you donate eleven thousand yeah. dollars, she'll <laughs> I think for that you should have to pretend Irish yours. dance without learning. For an entire <laughs> and I get to pick a song that's like six minutes long. And you gotta okay, stand no. there and fake it. I couldn't it. do it for six minutes. No, we decided well, I we couldn't did, do it for it. six minutes. That's it. Five. Done. No. <laughs> we have to go to breaks every ten. Yeah. Oh, we keep it going just to watch the awkwardness happen. You gotta stare at my face for hours when this thing gets shaved off. Goodness sakes! She'd get about three minutes done and then just I pass out. Yeah, yeah, fall she over. So tired. Not. I remember when my kids would want us to video them dancing to a song or whatever. About Aww. halfway through, they're like, "I'm done. Am I still going here? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that look on your face. Like, oh no, it's still time. I don't have any more moves with these feet. I'm done. Yeah." But yeah, so the uh, the shaving will happen Friday or Thursday, Thursday. in the eight o'clock hour. Mm -hmm. I think we're doing Ron's head first, and then my face. I think so. Yeah, and then Daria will sing at seven a.m. on Friday. Oh, we decided that we seven a.m. on Friday. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And Jamie Buxton will be with us. It'll be fun. Oh, nice.
What's that look for? Woohoo! I can't excited. wait. <laughs> I've asked you to do things like that, and you're just like, no, before I even finish asking. <laughs> well, so you were no, a painter. Do... Well, I don't, I don't like it. to show off. <laughs> I know. Aww. You're super humble. But remember, we get backstage passes when you're discovered from this, okay? Because okay. it's on the live stream. All right. That's Believe not going to happen. Us. <laughs> and, boy, She's going to be just like Justin Bieber. I don't think so. She is. I hope Usher's that. watching. Maybe he'll, <laughs> maybe he'll try to do that. Um, <laughs> Justin Bieber finds her. <laughs> Justin, oh, he can pay it forward. Yeah. He's a Christian. Yeah. yeah. The Beebs. If you're her. listening, Beebs, listen in. It's it's your turn to pay it forward. Usher did that for you. Now you do this for Daria. If Justin Bieber finds me, he can put me back. <laughs> <laughs> Daria. Goodness sakes. Uh, yeah, so tune in on uh, thir- uh, Thursday. And Friday. And, and Friday. Friday. It'll be great. Can't wait. Uh, don't be late. It's going to be great. If you hesitate. Oh, gosh. Here we go. Okay, we're done then. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, thanks to everybody who participated in Share It's Not Too Late. You could uh, have Lauren do at least five minutes of improv, unlearned Lauren Irish dance. dance. I'll be the lady of the dance. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be. You laughed at your own joke like I do. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, for eleven grand, you are doing that for? Yep. Yeah, it's how much we have left. 11729 Get your gift in today. 800-600-9624. MoodyRadio.org. All right, Ron, take us back to your bachelor days. Oh. Okay. Were you a pretty clean, picked up guy? No. I wasn't a slob, but I wasn't clean and picked up. There's a difference between clean and picked up, though. Like right. tidiness versus cleanliness. Were you were you tidy, first of all, picked up? Like 75% tidy. Were you clean? Uh, not you personally necessarily, but like your, <laughs> yeah. your apartment. Your habits. Um. Maybe more forty percent. For I've had a guy. I yeah. think I owned a sweeper. I I don't know that I ever <laughs> used it, but yeah, man, college was the worst for me. Where I don't, yeah, to, to take your laundry down to the basement. Yeah, hard. Mm-hmm. So I just I had a theory about my bath towel, which you're very familiar with. I'm clean when I use it. Therefore, I'm basically washing it every day. Therefore, you just have to wash it when you go home for a break. No, that's not true. <laughs> Even if it's stiff, uh, it's this fine. started to smell like like mildew. And no, it stinky. didn't because it dried. I had it hang out to dry. Every no, day. but that little bit of moisture will start to attract bacteria very quickly. Like you should replace your towel every couple of days. And then, I mean, bed sheets. Goodness oh, sakes, you just gosh, slide in no. there. You just <laughs> are you, you taking a shower the... before you go to bed? Not, no, you not take a morning day. shower. But I'm a pretty clean person, so that I would so just nasty. slide in there. <laughs> Slide out. Mm-hmm. It's lofted. You're sliding because it's the dirty. The smell would go up to the top of the room <laughs> with the hot air, and then Ew, I would yeah. clean it. Boys clean are it. so gross. I mean, like, once a semester. <gasps> Ugh. Come on, yeah. Ron. I think I was probably in that camp, too. <laughs> <laughs> Were you? I knew it. Yeah. Boys are so gross. They are. I had a roommate who would you occasionally. Have, you have three mm, boys of mm. your own. Tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, boys are gross. Mm-hmm. Boys are gross. <laughs> Well, and the uh, I had a roommate who would do laundry, but just jam it back into a laundry basket, and so he would his clothes were constantly wrinkled, like it ne- they never looked mm-hmm. put together, and he would never quite know which was the dirty pile and which was the clean pile. <laughs> so I'd watch him grab it out of like a, yeah. a potted plant fell over. There's dirt. He grabs it, shakes it off, and like kind of smells it. <laughs> ah, I'm sure it's fine, and he put it on. Mm-hmm. So. Ugh. I had a, a cousin, well, I still have the cousin, but he was single and taught in a, a rural Virginia school district for a while, and he would show up to school with the most wrinkled shirts ever, and finally, one of the lady teachers <laughs> said, you know what, why don't you give me your shirts after you wash them, I'll iron them out for you and give them back to you. Did he do it? Of course he did it. That's what a great so deal. Oh, man. <laughs> Any volunteers? Anyone? No. Volu- we have a steamer in the closet over here. You can bring your own shirts to work I and iron them here. I don't know how to use it. Help me. <laughs> I was just thinking about yesterday how, I mean, in comparison to you, it's not much, but how much laundry there is. Mm. And I was trying to be like the hero. And <laughs> I was trying to carry one really large basket it's like tall you know mm-hmm. it's not wide it's tall yeah. and then another tall one on top of it i was trying to carry both of clean clothes up the stairs That's not oh a good no idea. from your basement yeah not and it's a good two idea. flights oh no yeah. how did that go it wasn't good 
No. <laughs> Did you drop it? No, I didn't drop it, but it was. Did you hurt your back? Yeah, hurt my back. Mm-hmm. I was real frustrated, just sweaty, trying to be a hero. Well, you are a hero to most of us. So no. Now, were, were you all, you, you ladies, I'm guessing you were very put together and ironed in college then. Not ironed. I think I did have an iron. I don't remember using it all that often, though. But you cleaned your clothes a lot in your sheets and your, of course. And your towels. Yes. And yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I washed myself. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I washed myself pretty regularly. Yeah. We had, I had another Not roommate. with your mildew towel. <laughs> no, this is great. Yeah, you're coming out dirtier than <laughs> when you started. So we, we love playing practical jokes on each other. And so one of the roommates uh, grabs a banana from the cafeteria, brings it back. One of the dudes was gone to class, goes in his dorm room, peels the banana, jams the banana between the pillow and the pillowcase. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. And smashes it around a little bit. Oh, and then just sets it down because he knew this is a college guy. He's not going to flip over his pillow. Mm. He's not going to wash his pillowcase. And so <laughs> a couple of days go by, and the kid's freaking out because he woke up to a swarm of fruit flies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Uh, That's actually a good no. one. <laughs> Isn't that great? Don't, That's what you get if you don't ever clean yeah. anything. <laughs> yeah, well, kids listening at home, don't do that. It's a bad idea. But if you're in Wash college, maybe try it. <laughs> so uh, there's an article at cleveland.com about how often you're supposed to wash your clothes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I figured this would be the warm-up to that discussion. And before we get there, apparently one of the problems with how often to wash your clothes is something called fast fashion. Yeah. Yeah, she says. like, Okay, Ron, define fast fashion. Go ahead. Um, trends that don't last long. I didn't know this either, so I'm not oh. picking on you. Second guess, Ron. Go ahead. What's fast fashion? Um, clothes you buy at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> clothes you put on really fast. No, okay, so smarty pants ladies, what's fast fashion? Clothes that aren't built to last. How did you know that? Because they're cheap clothes. I don't know. I just, somebody told me sometime. You look it on the internet. Yeah. Like, I did, had no idea what that was. Yes. I was reading this like, oh, interesting. Fast they're, fashion. They're made mm. very cheap so that they can... Sell mass quantities, make yeah. more money. It's essentially what it is. And it, and apparently fashion experts say you can't even judge a quality of clothing based on price or feel. No. no. Because you can actually put a coating in the factory on it to make it feel fancy and nice, like <laughs> a plastic type coating on the clothing. Uh, but that washes off. Right. And so if you wash your clothes too often, they'll deteriorate. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. girls today happy because they wear shards of jeans, you know, like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like women's jeans are the most threadbare thing on the planet. It's an insult. Like my my Jimmy's always like, "Why are you so cold?" It's like because your jeans are four times as thick as mine are. They're actual <laughs> denim. Well, but also the the in trend, ladies. Apparently, you're not very in. Is massive amounts of holes in your jeans all yeah. the way up and down. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. that it's basically shorts with some threads down there. <laughs> right. Yes. Well, why aren't you both doing that? You do that. You have a pair like that. I've seen them. Yeah, one pair, and it's not from all my entire front leg is showing. It's like <laughs> a, a hole on the knees. There's there's teenage girls that do that. It's oh, yeah. like your whole leg is there. The entire I, leg is there. It's like some, attached at the very top and at the very bottom, yes. and there's nothing in between. Some so straps weird. across the middle, yeah. So <laughs> one of the problems, of course, for all you clean people, like women, like if you wash your, your clothes too much, they'll, they'll fall apart. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So how often do you wash your clothes? We'll get the scientific <laughs> answer to that here in just a minute. You don't have to put your life on hold to get your degree from Moody Bible Institute. Moody offers flexible online classes that feature a unique ministry-focused education. Study the Bible and theology anytime, anywhere. You'll benefit from the world-respected faculty and a connection with classmates from around the globe. Invest in your future and get your bachelor's or master's degree from Moody Online. Learn more at moody.edu slash online. That's moody.edu slash online. Kayla was in a panic when she called CareNet's Pregnancy Decision Line. When she asked about her choices, we explained all of her options. Kayla said, but I'm already at an abortion clinic. I'm in their bathroom. Our Pregnancy Decision Line coach asked Kayla what she wanted to do. 
She said, I want to leave. Kayla left the abortion clinic and we connected her with one of CareNet's life-affirming pregnancy centers where she could get free services and learn more about her pregnancy and her options. What you need to know is that the federal government is working on plans to fund a national abortion hotline using your tax dollars to refer women to abortion providers. The government's hotline won't tell women about all of their choices. It will be a referral line for one choice, abortion. We need you to join thousands of others who are pro-life and sign the CareNet pledge to stand against the National Abortion Hotline. Sign the pledge now at care-net.org. That's care-net.org. Keeping your eyes on Jesus in a changing culture can be difficult. Let us help. It's Mornings with Brian on Moody Radio Cleveland. 8.50, if you're just tuning in, uh, we've been over the basics of life, which are boys are kind of gross. <laughs> and especially when they're young, they don't wash things or really care whether they're clean. Yep. And I don't know, girls work too hard. Maybe not. I let that sit there to see what they would yeah. do. Nothing. They just ignored it. I was answering a text. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just ignoring me. So did you know there's a place called the American Cleaning Institute? No, I do now. Hmm. ACI is what we call it in the business. Oh. I just made that up. I don't know if they do. American Cleaning Institute. They have guidelines about washing. Now, we're going to share the gu guidelines and see how well we all meet these guidelines. Okay. And I'm curious, the, the <coughs> CEO of the ACI is probably pulling down $250,000 salary to tell us the guidelines for washing our clothes. Yeah, probably, yeah, yeah. And remember, you can't can wash them too to wash much them. because they'll be threadbare, as they right. say. That's what you just said, threadbare? Yes. Threadbare, yep. Which, what is that again? It's like worn out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The threads are bare. The threads are there. The threads are bare, the threads are there. Yes. You sound like Dr. Seuss. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, okay, what do you think their rule is for T-shirts, tank tops, bathing suits, leggings, Tights, underwear, and socks. After every time you wear them. That was a long list, but yeah, I would agree. Correct. It says you have to wash after one wear t-shirts, tank tops, bathing suits, leggings, tights, underwear, and socks. I object wholeheartedly to the t-shirt rule in there. You do not need to wash a t-shirt every time you wear it. That's why I'm glad we don't wow. share a studio. <laughs> yeah. I do. <laughs> Sorry, Lauren. They, they're touching your body like your underwear or your leggings. <laughs> Your leggings, Ron? <laughs> Not my leggings. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so the rule apparently for jeans, pajamas, and bras. Jeans, pajamas, jeans, and bras. Pajam I would not put those in the same category. Well, you are part of the American Cleaning Institute, apparently. Those are in the same category. I <laughs> wouldn't. Well, two to three wears. You should wash them. Oh. Jeans, pajamas, and bras. How do we feel about that? On Ron, the, you can comment on two if you'd like. You yeah. don't have to comment on all three. On the last one, I'm totally ignorant of how much that needs to be cleaned. Yeah, we don't know. But, um, yeah, jeans, if if you, like, if you're in an office-type setting like us, chances are you're not going to get them dirty. So if you haven't, like, spilt your coffee or something on them, yeah, wear them again. Yeah, I will actually generally wear pants a second day before I wash them. Everything else, though, first time, it's going in the wash. Everything else? Everything else. Wow. Apparently, suits can be worn three to four times before dry cleaning. Bath oh. towels can be hung to dry for an entire semester. I don't That's think it not says what they that. said. It's not? <laughs> I'm pulling up the article myself. <laughs> no. Back checking you. <laughs> Bath towels can be hung, it says, to dry and used three to five times. Yeah, exactly. Times five. Three to five times. I'm. Are you I use it days. and I put it in the dirty clothes and we wash it. Yeah, See, I do two to uh, two to three. It says three mm -hmm. to five, and so you you all. I, it doesn't say this here, but my guess is because you're clean when you when you use it. See. A semester still. is not the same as three to five days. <laughs> yeah, but there's still like oil on your body that your oil is not completely stripped when you shower, and that's getting transferred onto the well, towel. Well, maybe you don't wash enough, Daria. I, all the oils are gone for me. And I, I dry every part of my body wrong. after the shower, <laughs> and I don't want to 
put that part that I've dried certain parts. That's right. You know, to use to dry my face the next That's time. Right. <laughs> no, I just put that thing in the dirty clothes and wash it. See, do you know Hot what happened water. in my family if all seven of us used a towel once and then put it in the laundry? You do a lot of laundry. That's right. My little boys do this. No. They're right. No, they're not. The American <laughs> Cleaning Institute, ACI, three to five times. That's not what you said. What did I say? You said a whole semester. Well, I mean, that's really more of a so really cost-saving measure. So I do three to five for sure. Okay. Well, actually, until one of my kids steals it, then I get a new one. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> they're too lazy to go in the You'll closet the themselves. One. They just grab mine off the yeah. hook. Um, <laughs> Dara, you wash it every time, don't you? Uh, two to three times. Daria, hmm. three to five. Stretch it out. No. You do you. Uh, I will do me. <laughs> whites and silks should be washed everywhere, it says. Mm. So should anything with a stain. <laughs> 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 well, Thanks for that one. Well, thank you, American Cleaning Institute. <laughs> Does anybody wear silk anymore? Uh, no. I remember back in the back mm. in the day, silk shirts were in. I had a silk shirt in the closet. I have mm. one blouse, but I'm not sure if it's real silk. Right. Yeah. Does anybody have real silk anymore? I'm sure some people do, yes. Those really fancy, Just wealthy people that pay thousands for their Christmas lights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wearing their real silk. Yes, we. I have the worm that made this shirt. Um, so how well are we doing on their guidelines, Ron? We'll start with you. Um, pretty close. I'm, I'm probably right on or even more frequent than they, except for jeans. I'll, I wear them more than three or four times. Sometimes I'll go five or six. Okay. So what about that comfy outfit at home? I know you put on your comfy jeans like uh, Lauren's dad. Pastor Downey is just like, oh. He's got comfy jeans. Put on the comfy jeans. No, the jeans that I wear are my comfy jeans. I don't I don't have uncomfortable jeans to wear out. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> so you don't change into different pants at home? No. Okay. Ugh. But the only place you're stretching it is with, with pants. You might yeah. go a whole week. Yeah. And don't be embarrassed, Ron. It's okay. I'll, I'll get to my list here in a minute. Yeah. Lauren, how well are you doing? Miss, I carry all the laundry up in one trip. I'm doing fine. You're following all their rules? Yes. You wash your leggings every time? Yeah, I probably do those two wears and then I'm done. Well, wait, wait. You're a Christian, so you 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 wear you, your long dresses you wash every time. I don't time. wear long dresses. <laughs> your house dress? <laughs> I don't wear a house dress. Moo-moo? No, I don't have those. You know, th there's no moo-moo on the rule on the list here. Okay. Yeah, I wonder what that'd be. Does that count as pajamas? If it does, you got you got two to three wears out of right. that thing. That's what, nice. What do you do with your moo-moo there, um, <laughs> Daria? Oh, I wash it every day. Every day. <laughs> Whether yeah. aboard it or not, it goes in the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing with the rules? Are you following them? Pretty well. I think I wash a little bit more than they recommend, but I'm okay with that. You know, you want to save money on clothes there, Daria. You should wash less that because you're making them wear out faster. I have had the same clothes roughly since high school. I think I'm doing okay. Mm -hmm. Well, the key, they say, one of the ways to preserve your clothing, according to the experts here, is it's best to wash clothes in cold water and line dry them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because, we line dry in the summer. Well, because uh, the high heat can wear them out more quickly. Yeah. I do warm. Isn't that good? Warm? I do hot water for, like, the towels and underwear, those kind of things, and sure. cold for everything else. I, we don't have time to line dry. we got somebody sheets, crying about their laundry scalding. every day. Yeah. Oh, sheets just burn them. Scalding, yes. yes. Sure, mm -hmm. absolutely. Get dust mites out. Yeah, that's what you want to do. We got a text from our friend Rob, uh, the Social Security guy. Mm. says, Brian uses hand sanitizer every time he touches something but won't wash anything <laughs> regularly. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Hey, it's my germs. Totally different. I don't mm -hmm. want your germs. You don't want to get this? This is the thing. We had yeah. someone text that said, so what do you do for a daughter that, quote, cleans her room and throws a pile of clothes from the floor that were never worn in the laundry? That's washing every 0.5 times worn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, when I tell my kids to clean their room, it's just everything goes in the laundry. Yeah, yeah. even if they didn't wear it. Yeah. For me, jeans, Ron, I'm with you. They don't need to be. In fact, I heard the guy that made that first invented jeans or whatever, he never washed them. Levi Strauss? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a true story. Yeah, that's what I heard about, like, real denim, yeah. So you're saying my jeans aren't real denim? Is that what you're I don't saying? know if they are. I'm just saying real denim, you're not supposed to wash every time. I feel like you, get, you can get a week out of that. 
five, oh, sure. five days out of those jeans. The problem, though, is that we mix other materials into our jeans now. Mm-hmm. And so then they, like, start to stretch, and then they're all baggy and weird. Not mine. Uh, and <laughs> then and then uh, I have this. I've got the outfit I wear at home. i got a real shirt I like a lot. i got mine a pair of pants it. I like. Yeah. And, yeah, I can wear that for the week. What's wrong with that? Mm, not the week. Why not? Are you the boss of me at home? <laughs> I'll ask Sarah how she feels about that. I don't know. I have three lounge outfits probably per week. So if I just brought mm-hmm. him a few more. Yeah, that's okay. Because they're like pajamas. I do wash my towel regularly now. Good for you. That's good. <laughs> that's called maturity. <laughs> <laughs> Adulting. <laughs> for more information, go visit the American Cleaning Institute's website. What is it? I have no idea. Google it we'll if send you, you care you, that text much. Text session will send you the article. Just wash your clothes sometimes a semester. It's 9 o'clock. Uh, <laughs> we got 